It's past. I'm recording this uh, Thursday, September 8th, 2016. Uh, and uh, it'll be about a month ago, actually less than a month, that I uh, picked up a certain thing. And I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about because it's the title card went up and the title of the video. This is the Go Gamer Portable My Arcade. 220 ready to play retro video games. 220 prêt à jouer des rétro jeux vidéo. And it's from Dream Gear who uh, makes uh, those, did, who did those plug and play things. I uh, did that one plug and play thing like a few years back. I'm sure you could find the video somewhere. It's on the playlist somewhere. And uh, I was quite surprised to hear that Dream Gear was still around, but apparently uh, they do some other stuff besides cheap old stuff like this. In any event, it's a fairly recent product. It has a copyright date of 2016. Don't toss it in the bin. FC thing. Uh, no sad onions, apparently. Game types. Puzzles, strategy, racing, action, combat, sports. And the same stuff in French. Stream gear. My arcade. Anyways, that's what it looks like on the unit. It's one of those cases that open up. And what do we find? Well, nothing because I've already been playing with the thing for about a month already. But you have various screenshots of various games that's featured on this thing. Most notably, uh, a lot of public domain knockoff games, that sort of thing. It's the back of the box. More screenshots. A picture of the unit itself. 220 fun and easy built-in games. Easy might be one thing. Fun might be another. Neither or both might apply. Take your games anywhere. That much is true. 2.5 inch color display with illuminated buttons. Ooh. Headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter, connects to your TV, AV cables not included. <sighs> nah, nah, nah. Fortunately, I do have an AV cable from some other thing. It works with that, and uh, I'll be able to show you the games uh, the proper way. And of course, the other thing that's sticking right in front of you requires three AAA batteries not included. Fortunately, I had those laying around, so no real biggie. Yeah, Dream Gear LLC, DreamGear.com, VO Box, blah 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 blah, all that, get the da all that stuff. Uh, Go Gamer Portable had a tab, red little plastic tab thing that would hang, you would hang on the store racks. Uh, that's long since been gone. And uh, anyways, that's the box. We're done with that. We could toss that to the side, right on the couch. And of course, it comes with this beautiful. Go Gamer Portable 220 User Guide, which uh, tells you everything you need to know about the functionality of this device, material needs that's not included, and uh, various button functions on how to navigate through the menus, uh, setting a TV up with the television, troubleshooting, everything you want to know about the Go Gamer except how to play the fucking games that's included on the thing. So, uh, this is pretty much a paperweight. Thin little book, but they just repeat the same thing three times in different languages, which is the, uh, the usually the case these days. So we don't need that. And, of course, we have the, the console itself. That's the console. That's the Go Gamer. Uh, somewhat resembles a Game Boy. Well, you got your reset button, your start button, your your, your D-pad. It's kind of an odd-looking D-pad. So-so. Got your A button, your B button, your fingerprint magnet, and then you have your three AAA batteries. Note the screw. You need a screwdriver to unscrew the ca thing and put in the batteries and all that and it had another sticker but it fell off I don't think you'd really care about the stickers and uh, 
Yeah, it's almost like a Game Boy. A Game Boy or a Game Boy Pocket, or uh, I guess I have one here on hand. We have a Game Boy Color. And it's uh, almost, almost the same thing. Certainly height-wise. This one's slightly smaller than the uh, Game Boy Color. In any event, uh, we turn it on and uh, it's not working. Ah, there we go. That's your uh, color display. It's actually it's actually quite a bright little display there. And uh, turn it on illuminates the buttons but just your your for your actual buttons the d-pad to rubber d-pad uh, which is not the best feeling uh, control pad to be honest with you feels a bit stiff and flimsy and, and all jet that but it's somewhat responsive and stuff it you know for the games that it offers some of the game that it offers it it's adequate and that sort of thing, but not something you want to play for extended periods of time. So, uh, I put it off long enough. <laughs> so we're going to go through the whole gamut of games. Uh, word of warning, it's going to take a good long while. Uh, I anticipate it might take a couple hours to blow through the whole games. Because I want to try and play through some of them. But I'll try and keep it as brief as possible. And, and and that sort of thing, I don't know. So, um, without further ado, I present to you the Go Gamer footage. Go! So when we start the device up, we have this title screen greeting us, Family Sports 220 and 1. And we have a baseball player with uh, no limbs, floating hands, floating feet, that sort of thing, and some kind of character and some sports equipment. Uh, presumably, uh, the main games of this package, as we will see in a short bit, are sports games. And we're going to stay on this title screen for a little bit because I kind of like the tune. That is actually a lie. I don't know why I'm 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 on this title screen for a long period of time. I'm try I guess I'm trying to pad the thing out because a two three hour video is doesn't doesn't have enough padding in it. So we're gonna pad this out a little more. Um, and I guess nothing's happening, and we'll press the A button. And we have various games. We have tennis. We have golf, baseball, table tennis, bowling, darts, basketball, boxing, trampoline, fishing, ice hockey, curling, city battle, crazy model, run, fence, boom, beep, 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 and educational games, and we'll, we'll just start with tennis. It's a fairly, you have varied courts with different bouncing and speed types, which is always fun. You can choose how many sets you want to play, how many games you want to play, and as we move on to the next screen, uh, you get to choose your opponent. You don't get to choose your player because everything will be played from a first-person perspective. As we will soon see. I'm just looking for a decent... Uh, the closest thing to an easy opponent because I'm pretty crap at these sorts of games. Regardless of where they're coming from. So any pl anyways, the final set. And... Uh, just press the A button to hit the ball when it's at the right angle and that's pretty much it. You just press the A button to hit the ball. And you play the best tennis game you could by pressing one button. And I'm doing pretty poorly at this point. And uh, anyways. That's all you really do. You press the A button when the ball's at the right angle, the right height, that sort of thing. And you, you, know, you hit it and it'll go different directions and all that. And I'm not doing very good. Anyways, uh, it's it's kind of boring, you know. 
I, I, I'd imagine uh, actual table tennis or, or ping pong would be a much more enjoyable game than uh, this, this, this fairly... It's a fairly rudimentary, not a very exciting game. And um, you just press one button. So there's not much else to it beyond that. And I think we're ready to move on here. Hold on. So when you're bored with tennis, you can go play golf. And, and golf is a fairly... Fairly, fairly, fairly decent approximation of golf, I would say. You, you have varied characters. You can choose how many holes you want to play. And you have this really loud, annoying music. Just, just kind of, eh. That's how much green you have to tra traverse. Fairly straightforward uh, golf game. You know, you could determine the distance, you could, your club type, and then. You time your, your button presses to hit the ball at the desired direction and location. You take into you take wind into account and that sort of thing, and, and nobody cares. Um, so I'm trying to play a decent game of... I'm trying so desperately hard. I'm trying to get the feel for the controls here. That's so... Obviously... That's a, that's a beautiful shot right there, ladies and gentlemen. And ooh... Still in the green. Ooh, right in the rough. Not too bad, though. Not too bad. Not too bad. Nice, hard shot. Ooh, right, right, right there, right there. Only one putter away from making it a, uh, uh, a birdie, an eagle, or something. A birdie! Yay! Okay, that's enough. You get the idea. It's it's a it's a generic golf game. It plays rather nicely. Not much else to it. And we're gonna move on to something else, please. Thank you. Anyways, moving right along, we're gonna play baseball. And like the tennis game, you could choose your your setting and you have different teams that you could play with not that it really matters because it's all the same th same thing uh, so anyways it's a baseball game and not a particularly exciting one and I'm not that good at baseball games to begin with so uh, I'm probably you I, I like that you could choose your 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 bat strikes and all that and you could also choose your pitches if you're doing that and we are out yeah um yeah not much to it i guess i could show you some gameplay from the pitcher side of things hopefully i'll fare a little better on that regard so here's the pitcher side pretty much the same deal you pick a pitch type and you pitch Oh, I got a strike, so I'm doing fairly well so far. And uh, actually, I think I'm faring a bit better from the pitcher's side of things. And 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 and, and, and that, that's that's a, that's a home run. Uh, okay, so that's that's kind of unfortunate. Um, yeah. Um, so that's a home run in this game. Um, not a fan. So we're gonna pause it. We're gonna exit. We go back to the main menu. This is table tennis. You choose an opponent, it's basically tennis, the same old thing. You know, you press the A button to hit the ball, and that sort of thing. It's table tennis, it's it's a bit more faster paced, but it's pretty much a f the same thing as the tennis game. I don't think there's not, I don't think there's much else to say. Though between the two, I kind of prefer table tennis over the actual tennis, but that's just me. Anyways, moving right along. Next up, we have bowling, and bowling is, eh, and we'll, we'll choose one of the girls, I guess, I don't care. So you move it back and forth, and you, you go to a power meter, and then you, you, you do the thing, and, 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 and gutter ball. Absolutely fucking brilliant. This is another game that I'm not very good at. 
So we'll, we'll get one in the hole and then we'll move on to the next game and 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 then we knocked out some pins. That's good enough for me. Next game. Darts. Darts is fun when you're playing it with an actual dartboard in this video game format. Um Ugh, sorry, I, I dozed off. We should probably move on to something else. So next up, we have basketball, and... Oh, God, that, that music. The gameplay is not much better. You move your little hands around, and you, you, you toss the ball into the basket, which is moving, because that, that's a thing with basketball. The, the basket moves and all that shit, and... There you go, got a hundred points for that toss instead of a three point and all that jazz and, 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 and you know what. I don't even know why I'm talking about this thing. Let's just let's move on to something else. It's not a particularly good game. It's not what I think of when I hear someone say basketball. I mean I mean come on. The scoring system is is, is flimsier than a Harlem's Globetrotter winning streak. But anyways, moving on. Yeah, anyways, uh, next up we have boxing, and you have to choose your opponent. They're all dudes. They all look like giant babies. And, uh, it's a boxing game. You, you play, you, you control a pair of disembodied gloves, and you try to punch the baby out. Which is, um, pretty gruesome and terrible and I'm not particularly good at this game <laughs> to be quite honest with you uh, probably because I, I don't have the heart to beat the crap out of a walking baby and I don't mean the kind that exists on the internet that says stupid shit it's uh, I feel like that one look I can't play this anymore it's boring as shit on top of that Anyways, trampoline. Trampoline is some girl, some guy, something bounces on the trampoline and you have to press the appropriate button configuration that appears on screen. It's it's like a rhythm thing and I don't like rhythm things cuz they make my fingers bleed and, and all that jazz and I should probably check get that checked and all that stuff and I don't even know why I'm still playing this. Um, I seem to be doing all right, though. I I I, I can't bless. I guess when you only have like two buttons at most, or, or something. I don't know. I I, I fuck. Seven twenty. Uh, whatever. I, I don't care. I'm in third place. Oh, okay, so that's 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 all right, I guess. So, I don't care. Anyways, you win that game or not, you go to that game where you play the fishing game, and the fishing game is... It's the nicest looking game, I guess, I suppose. Uh, something or other. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good at fishing games. I probably have an easier time catching real fish. And, uh sort of hesitated in going forward but anyways you try to f reel the fish in and sometimes you catch them and sometimes they go away and sometimes the line snap it, it annoys the shit out of me and I don't care and I want to move on to something else and we're gonna do that right now so next up is ice hockey and must like most other uh, team sports games featured on this thing it's just a generic shootout you, you try to shoot the puck into the net while avoiding the uh, the players and the goalie and I'm whiffing these fucking pucks and I the pucks explode if you miss the net and and there you go the goalie's not a particularly great goalie he, he kinda s oh, he caught that one I guess uh, we'll give him some credit I'm not really doing a whole lot here 
Um, I'm kind of bored, to be honest with you. It almost makes me want to play a proper hockey game. Blades of Steel. That Wayne Gretzky 3D hockey on Nintendo 64. I actually got that on PlayStation. I wouldn't mind trying that one out. Uh, I'll even take Wayne Gretzky hockey on the NES, which is not that good of a game. But it's got to be better than this. That much is for sure. And, um... And, and I, I guess, you know, whatever. Anyways. The, the whole idea is, you know, if you reach the required number of points, you... Well, who cares? Anyways, curling. Another Canadian pastime. Unfortunately, I don't like curling. I don't know how to play curling. I'm not very good at curling. And, 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 and it, you know what? I, I honestly don't give a shit. But to be honest with you. Yeah, moving on. So now that we've got the sports games out of the way, let's play City Battle, which is a uh, scrolling shooter of sorts. With some ill-fitting uh, casual leisure music. And uh, you fly a ship around. You, you blow other things up. You pick up these power capsules. It's basically the poor man's Gradius. Or the poor man's Nemesis. Or the poor man's life force, whatever Gradius, Gradius, whatever it is, it is, it is anyways. Anyways, like, 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 as per tradition, you, you, you pick a power-up and you have different power-ups and, and force fields and things of that nature. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of bullets flying around that kill you rather quickly. And you do have a health meter, which is kind of nice and, and appreciated. Unfortunately, there's no sense of, of balance or rhythm. Just random shit shows up on screen and you try to avoid it as best as possible. Yeah, there's a pattern, of course, naturally, so it's not completely random. But the level does drag on for very, very long. And sometimes you pick up power-ups that will restore your shield energy, which is nice. Um, I, think th I think it took me... I've, I think I played this for about 15-20 minutes before I realized there was a boss... Of this, there's, well, there was a level boss, and we'll skip to that uh, right now, actually. And I, as you can probably tell, I don't last that long against the boss, and the game's over anyway. So uh, that's that's unfortunate, I suppose. In any event, uh, you lose. You go back to the main menu, and we move on to our next game, which is um, Crazy Moto, where you uh, play a bonum riding a motor bike, a motorbike, I guess. Fairly straightforward little thing. Sort of a, it sort of has a road rash element to it because you could kick other players, but it doesn't really mean much. And 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 I don't know. You're still trying to win a race and that sort of thing. But it, it is something, I, I guess. Not not much in terms of graphic uh, violent crashes or anything like that. You just sort of blink and you respawn at the center of the screen. There's not really a whole lot to it. There are multiple tracks. If you have the patience to sit through that sort of thing, I guess, I suppose. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to move on because I, I want to play something else. And, and I want to get through this as quickly as possible because the main meat is more interesting than... Run! This is basically track and field, but from the behind the view perspective and with giant babies. <laughs> Um, 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 I guess, you know, I guess you press one button, you press the other, and you try to do it in a sequence, and you try to keep the beater up to keep up with the other players, and I'm absolutely crap at this game, and I don't like it very much, and, and I don't like these babies either, and, 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 and I don't give a shit. Anyways, yeah, I lost. That's, that's, that's unfortunate, I guess. Anyways, but we ran along, we will have, uh, sorry about my guy. Oh, god damn, that's what happens. Anyways, moving right along, we've got... Fencing! And... It's... Much like the boxing game, uh, it's a bunch of babies fighting each other with dangerous, pointy objects. And, uh, I, for the life of me, have no clue why anyone would want to play something like this. I mean, look at the... Look at these giant babies. 
They even sound like babies for fuck's sake. Anyways, it's a fairly rudimentary fencing game. Not the greatest thing ever, but it, it, it technically does what it's supposed to, and... I don't know, it works. Whoever scores the most hits and the most points wins, and, and you just go back to the menu, and you do the whole thing all over again. Or you play something else, wh whatever floats your boat. So, next up we have Swim, and um, I will be completely honest with you, I have no idea how to play this. <laughs> I really don't know. I, for the life of me, uh, cannot play this game. Um, not that good at it. I don't know how it, how it works, how it's supposed to work. And all these babies are jumping into the pool with their clothes on. Um, um, anyways. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'd rather have mutant rabbit things, like on that Nintendo V thing, than giant overgrown babies. And, 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 okay, that's how I feel about this thing. Anyways, moving right along. We have racing, and, and guess what this is? It's a racing game. But uh, it, it, it sort of has that... Car it's sort of a kart racing game, much in the same vein as Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64 and that sort of Mario Kart, but a little more shit in comparison. And... Um, Ah, uh, I don't know. Anyways, it's it's like the other game, except you're 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 driving a cart and you're not punching anybody, uh, unless it's someone next to you, and then you could punch them just fine. But it won't have any repercussions into the game itself unless he breaks it or she breaks it or. Uh, I, 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 I don't. I, I, don't I, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know, the rest of this footage, because this is actually pretty exciting stuff. I guess not. Uh, I'm stalling for time at this point. Really. But, um... Okay, I've had enough of this. Moving on. And finally, we have Mini Fighter, which is your... Your sort of, uh... Super gem fighter, pocket fighter, sort of knockoff. You can probably tell you have five different characters, most of them being reskinned versions of the pocket fighters. Like this guy here is sort of like a white haired Ken Masters from that sort of game. And you got like a Hadouken Fire. That's more like a, a Mega Man Fireball from Marvel vs. Capcom. So they took some graphics, they, they changed up some of the colors. And, um,. I'll tell you what, though, uh, it's not the greatest thing ever, but it's probably the one game I've played the most, to be honest with you. It's a fairly competent fighting game for, 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 what, for what it is. You know, the moves are fairly easy to pull off. They're your typical Street Fighter-esque uh, quarter circles and that sort of thing. And you have special moves that you can pull off by pressing two buttons and that sort of thing. And... Um, Thus far, probably the best game on the pack, and certainly the best game of the main titles, uh, to say the very least. You got a typical arcade mode where you can just fight different characters and that sort of thing. At the end of the day, it won't replace your Street Fighter or your Tekken or whatever the case may be, but on a thing like this, it ain't too bad. I'm actually quite impressed, to be honest with you. And the next section we have is the educational games, our first sub-menu, of which there are 40 uh, educational games. Of course, I say 40 with a grain of salt because it's, these are actually variations of the same 5, 10 games. There are some games that, you know, like the uppercase and lowercase letters, a uh, letter pops up on screen and you, it helps your child uh, learn how to pronounce these things. And then there are, you know, find find the number that fits in with this number, find the largest number, find the biggest letter, or, or that sort of thing. Very basic, very rudimentary things, and, and you know, other than the theme and that sort of thing, um, you know, fill in the, the sequences and, and that sort of thing. 
very basic, very rudimentary, you know, decent learning tools. But if you're over the age of three, I don't think you're going to find much use for this. Unless you, you want to learn some letters and pictures and things of that nature. Uh. Hello, Extra Bit here. I want to give special mention to game number 13, Learning Rhythm. It's rhythm learning. It is whack-a-mole. And you just whack the mole that appears closest to you. This game is played with only one button. Literally, just one button. Can't move the mallet around. You just press the A button at the right time to whack the mole that pops up. Well, I don't know how much I'm learning, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just thought I'd bring that up, I, I guess. So now that we got the educational games out of the way, let's check out the mini game section, which is where the majority of the games and this thing is found. There's six categories, puzzle, action, venture, relax, sport, and table. We're going to go through these bit by bit. Let's start with the puzzles. So that's the first category. And the first game is Shudu. And Shudu, you get to pick your level of difficulty. This is Sudoku, pretty much. Um, it's Sudoku. Uh, anyone who's played Sudoku, or, or like, <laughs> you don't really play Sudoku, there are just a bunch of puzzles. But anyone familiar with Sudoku should feel right at home. If home means you play Sudoku with a D-pad and a button and that sort of thing. Typically, this is the sort of thing you play on a uh, pen and paper book thing or a tablet or a mobile device with a touchscreen interface. Not exactly the most inspiring thing to uh, play w on a system like this. And all the while, you have this dreary, 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 dreary uh, sleep inducing lullaby playing in the background. I'm sure it's all very, very exciting, and uh, I don't really care for Sudoku, so we're going to move on to the next game, which is... Move Box. And if you really need to tell you what this game is, <laughs> this is Sokoban. That game where you move boxes into specific spots, and that's how you clear levels, and all that jazz. It's a staple in a lot of these type of uh, devices where you don't have any ideas on creative games, so you just put in a variation of Sokoban. It's a familiar game. You've played it on a bunch of platforms. Uh, it's got a somewhat cutesy visuals and long-ass transitions, and um, um, uh, I've, I've, you know, I got nothing. <laughs> I really don't. So. Yeah, anyways, it's Sokoban. Uh, again, never really cared for Sokoban, so... Yeah. Moving right along. Color Stone. Basically, this is a puzzle game where you move a bunch of colored blocks together and you have to make them, put, stick them together, pretty much, uh, in whatever way you could. This is a fairly easy first stage, and that's an annoying sound effect playing. It's a fairly basic concept. It takes a while to get used to and figure out the puzzles, but uh, not bad for a quick time waster. But ultimately, uh, <laughs> I'm sure this is a ripoff of something. I don't know what. And more importantly, I don't particularly care. And of course, you have the annoying. Uh, I, I, I shouldn't say annoying, but rather the sleep inducing lullaby uh, tunes playing in the background. And I'm going to move on to something else, which would be Free Cell. It's Free Cell. If you know how to play Free Cell, then you know more than I do, because I've never been a fan of this game. <sighs> oh, you get to choose a game. Oh, hundreds of thousands of varieties of Free Cell, but it's still Free Cell. I'm not a fan of Free Cell. I prefer Solitaire myself. Or Klondike, I guess, or something, I don't know. 
Anyways, moving on to the next game. Go Bang! Otherwise known as Pente, a game from way back when. According to the Wikipedia page, the players alternate in placing stones of their color on free intersections with white always assuming the opening move. The players aim to align five stones of the same color in vertical, horizontal, or diagonal lines. Captures are obtained by, by flanking pairs of an opponent's stones in any same direction. Captures must consist of exactly two stones. Flanking a single stone or three stones does not result in a capture. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I've seen this game on various Famicom multi-card things, and this is pretty much the same game in that regard, and I'm not particularly good in that. Hey, I won! <laughs> How about that? This is better than the one on the Famicom in that case. Anyways, moving on to the uh, next game. Mine. Otherwise known as Mine Sweeper. And of course I'm going to play this on easy because I'm absolutely horrible at Minesweeper. That's, that's unfortunate. Basically, you clear all the blank spaces and you try not to land on the mines and you try not to blow yourself up. Uh, and that sort of thing. You're all familiar with Minesweeper. You're probably better than, at it than I am. So we'll move on to the next game and just be done with it. That, that's a sad note to go out on. Parking Lot! Basically, it's like one of those sliding puzzle things where you slide things around and that sort of thing. In this case, you're trying to slide cars and trucks around so you could get this red car to drive out off the, into the street and that sort of thing. And that's all there really is to it. There's a bunch of different variety, there's a bunch of varied uh, layouts here and there, but I don't care for sliding puzzles in general, so... Um, yeah, it's alright, I guess. For that sort of thing. Next. Dogs. Basically, the goal of this game is to guide the colored dogs to their colored X's. So the red dog has to go on the red X, the blue dog has to go on the blue X, and so on and so forth. The gimmick here is that you click on the dog and they move to the empty space. If there's no empty space for them to go to, then they don't move, they just bark. Right now I'm just figuring out how the thing works because as you can imagine, the game doesn't come with instructions, so it's kind of difficult to see. I don't know. Anyways. Anyways, it's an interesting game. Somewhat, kind of, sort of, I guess, I suppose. I don't know. It could be interesting. But it's kind of boring, or... So, why did I call it interesting? I don't know. I'm just... just um, move it to the top. There you go. Yay! A happy sound. Except not that happy a sound. It's kind of annoying. So green dog goes on the green X, the black dog goes on the black X. Let's get the blue dog onto this thing and hooray! Level completed! Next game! Rolling box. Basically you have to roll the box, or in this case a brick of some sort and try to make it fit into the little hole in there. Fairly simple concept. The maps sometimes get a bit more challenging. There's tiles that bounces the brick around and that sort of thing. And uh, this one's decent. There's bridges you could create, I guess. And you could do that. That's... it's not a bad idea. I guess. There we go. Anyways, moving on to the next game. Big Shot Checker! It's fucking checkers next. Next up we have Sea Fight. A fight where you control a pirate ship and you move tile by tile. One tile at a time and the other ships move towards you and then they crash into you and then they blow up and you try to attack them and I don't know how I don't know exactly how you're supposed to play this game um, but I, I did score 200 points apparently I scored another 200 points that's great and I scored 600 points and I died moving on next up on the list we have build road which is a bit of a misnomer because you're actually trying to build a hill basically this little girl wants to reach the treasure chest on top I think it's a treasure chest let's just go with it and you gotta 
lay out blocks so that she could climb and reach the treasure chest without having to smash her into little... without having to, you know, flatten her, you know? Uh, anyways, you lay out these blocks which have different markings. I don't know if you're able to clear these blocks and I didn't really care enough because I got bored with this game rather quickly. But I did, you know, maintain some level of sanity enough to uh, get the girl to her uh, prize on top, I guess. Uh, so I completed the first level, and when I saw the second level, I lost all interest and uh, figured I wasn't going to bother, so I was going to do the humane thing and crush the little girl with the, my one solitary brick. Well, that's unfortunate. Anyways, moving on to the next game. Next up, we have Puzzle Connection. Basically, you have to guide energy from your energy converter to the pyramid, and that's how you clear a level. This is a fairly straightforward puzzle. You know, one way, but then later puzzles, you have to be uh, creative. There's a certain way to go through the whole grid. And sometimes you have to go through uh, conduits that will recharge your energy shots and give you a little longer time to complete the puzzle. Because if you run out of uh, moves, then uh, it's a uh, game over, I guess. And uh, that's not a bad thing, necessarily. Uh, the idea is fairly straightforward. It works well enough, but... Uh, you know, much like most puzzle games, I don't expect you to be interested in this that very long, and I certainly lost interest in this fairly quickly, unfortunately. But uh, I'll give them some credit. It's straightforward. It's 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 functional, I guess, and uh, uh, not that interesting. I'm I'm afraid, but uh, uh, what's the worst that could happen, right? So I'm going to use this power energy thing to give myself more moves and uh, light up the pyramids and we are done with this game. Anyways, moving on to the next one. Next up we have Trance Mover where you control a rat and you basically have to get a key on each level to open up the portal and you move on to the next level. One button uh, shoots an energy beam while the other resets the stage so your character cannot jump whatsoever. Here I was trying to jump and uh, it just reset the map all over again. So you cannot jump, but you can climb uh, single blocks, which is a good thing. The gimmick here, as I'm going to show you in the next level, is that your beam doesn't kill enemies, but rather, if you shoot it at these green blocks, for example, you could teleport. You could swap places with the block, and uh, that's kind of a useful ability if you know what to do with it. Unfortunately, I have no clue what to do with this thing, but uh, I, I guess it's something, right? Anyways, uh, I'm, I spent about five minutes trying to figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to do here, and uh, I don't know. So we're going to move on to the, the next game, which is... Next up we have Pocket Change, and basically this is simple mathematics. You pick out coins that fit the criteria listed on the left. So two coins adding up to $21, you would pull out a $20 coin and a $1 coin, which is what I didn't do here. Clearly I can't read. Unfortunately, a button press will reset the game and you can continue onwards. Basically, you have about 30 seconds to do whatever, and it's it's fairly simplistic and straightforward, doesn't take a whole lot, and uh, once the time runs out, you're moved back to the title screen, so there's not much else to say here except moving on to the next game, which is... Brain Challenge. This is a simple counting game. You start on the square and you have to calculate the route and you go follow up a path. So if you veer off that path, you know, basically, you know, they tell you minus one. So you go from 59 to 55 and if it goes plus one, you go from 79 to whatever the case may be. So it's a simple counting game. If you veer off course, you're wrong. And like the other game, you only have a minute to play. And once that time runs out, you move back to the title screen. And there's not much else I could say. Uh, it's a very short game, it's not that interesting, and uh, much like anything else here, but uh, I don't know what else to tell you, but uh, anyways, moving on. Shape Switcher. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward concept. Basically, you're a shape, you're a thing, and in order to go through a certain door, you have to change into a certain color, and not only a certain color, but also a certain shape. So that door only opens if I'm a red triangle, so basically I color myself red, and then I touch the bottom icon to turn my ball into a triangle, and uh, that's pretty much the concept. 
Later levels, of course, get more complex and that sort of thing, but the gameplay never goes that complex. And of course, you have a limited amount of time to clear the level because if you don't clear the level on time, then then there's not much else or something. I don't know. And, and, and I've got nothing. All right. Next up, we have Maze of Doors, and basically, you have to reach the end of the exit, the thing there, and you do that by opening doors, and doors open one way, and um, you have to move around the doors to close them and stuff. And uh, fairly basic concept, much like everything else in this uh, plug-and-play thing. And uh, I don't know, not much else to it, not much interest, uh, I'm getting bored, uh, you're noticing a theme here, unfortunately, and uh, let's, let's, let's move on, shall we? Next up we have Super Brick, it's a sliding puzzle thing where you slide tiles. If two tiles of the same color touch each other, they disappear, so naturally the goal is to make all the colored tiles disappear. Then you clear the level, you move on to the next level, it's all complex, and... <sighs> By this point, uh, I've played how many puzzle games, and uh, this is where it starts to feel really draining, just going through all these games. Not draining because they're challenging or anything like that, but draining because they're just plain dull and boring. And, and um, my hopes aren't high that the quality of the games are going to be any better in the other categories. But nonetheless, we shall persevere, but for now, we're going to skip to the next game, which is... Panda Labyrinth. Basically, you have to move a panda from a blue brick to a brown brick, and you do this by moving these crates onto these pink buttons that will unlock the doors. Basically, it's a sort of a 2D isometric Sogoban, and since I never cared for Sogoban when it was flat and 2D, uh, this added perspective doesn't help. What compounds things further is the controls. Each uh, direction on the D-pad is mapped to a certain diagonal, and, and you know, it's easy to say that once you figure out the controls, it shouldn't be a problem. Unfortunately, your panda moves at such a slow, sluggish pace that it, it becomes almost intolerable. Yeah, and, 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 and it's easy to fuck up. Oh, God, Jesus, go down, you stupid. G go the fuck. There we go. No, oh, no, no, no. You're going the wrong way, dumbass. There we go. Push the little brown brick. There we go. There, anyways, moving up. No, 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 no. You're going the wrong way. There we go. Now we got the doors, now we're gonna go to the brown brick, and god damn, this is so tedious. And, and come on, there we go, we can go this way, you know, no, no, wrong way, no, no, you're going the long way, stupid, dumb sh- God, fucking dead. Go the other way, you stupid, there we go, there we go, that's such a good little panda, you stupid sack of fucking- Fuck this game, moving on. Chess. It's chess, what do you want, moving on next. Link water pi oh this is pipeline. Oh fuck me, yeah it is. Oh fuck me. God damn it. I I don't like pipeline game type of games. I, I don't have the patience for it and this is just like another one. So uh, yay, pipeline, I guess I I, I suppose and, and uh, look, I, I I don't care. I don't care for this sort of thing when it was done well and here it's just Next, Classic Tangram. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you, I have no clue what you're supposed to do here, and unfortunately, the game documentation is not helpful in, in sort of telling me. I, I could probably research this, but, uh, uh, you know what? I'm sure somebody knows how this game works, uh, so uh, they could probably explain it. But don't explain it to me, I'm probably never going to touch this anyway, so... Sorry everyone, we're moving on to the next one. Silver Sphere. Basically, you have to guide your sphere to the portal, and sometimes that involves pushing crates to form little bridges to cross the water because your sphere can't float. Because you could fall off the platforms, and you have to avoid other obstacles that will might crash you or push you off or something, or... And of course you have a time limit, because what game needs a time limit? You know, I don't know. It's, it's like a couple other games where you just try to move the object to the exit, and there's some obstacles, and there's some like gimmick that you have to follow, and there's not much to it. And the game's not very, very, very... This is bland. Not that exciting, not great. Um, and I'm almost out of time. I honestly don't care. We're going to move on to the next game right about now. 
Bomb Chain Unlimited. The sad thing is you don't have an unlimited number of bombs, but apparently you have to blow all these bombs up and you have to position the three bombs you have in a certain way to sort of blow everything up, I guess. I, I, I honestly don't know. I've never been able to figure this one out. And, um... I don't know. I guess something will blow up. Yeah, fail. Yeah, uh, so, uh... I've been trying to I've been trying to figure out what the fuck you're supposed to do and unfortunately uh, yeah this is why having instructions for some of these games are wouldn't be such a bad idea say what you will about the Genesis portable player thing with you know where they package half the uh, content with uh, Genesis games and the other content with homebrew crap but at least they have some basic instructions for the homebrew if you have the manual. This doesn't give you anything. So you're left figuring out what to do in these games and uh, at this point I sort of just gave up and we move on to the next one. Seven. Okay. So I guess the idea here is you're supposed to match up these gems but the gems change into different numbers and, uh, and I guess um, I honestly don't know what you're supposed to do, to be honest with you, but... Slam these two things together, uh, fives, and now I did do ones, and I, I made a chain, and I don't know what I did, I don't know how you're supposed to play this, but... Uh, I made a chain of uh, block clearings, and I completed the level, and we're moving on to the next game, which is move squares. You basically move squares, and you have to move them to the... Uh, you have a number of steps to move these squares onto these other squares, and... It's a sliding puzzle thing that I don't care for, and um, this is the point where, well, we've moved past the point where I realized they're out of ideas. But let's let's I don't know let's let's something next puzzle ball. Basically, you got to move the puzzle ball into the little hole in the ground, and you do this by placing whatever tiles they give you in a certain way so that the ball doesn't smash into a million pieces. Um, it took me a while to figure out what the correct pattern and by the time I did the game was over because I ran out of time. So... Um, look, you know what? I honestly don't care. <laughs> At this point, I honestly don't care. I just want to be over with these puzzle games and uh, the end is near at the very least. Anyways, start. There goes the ball. Bye-bye, ball. Anyways, moving on. Button Jumper. Basically, you have this little girl with a propeller on her head, and you basically have to jump on all the buttons to make them go away while making it to the white square in the bottom thing, or whatever it's called, from A to Z, that sort of thing. In a way, it's sort of like Qbert, if Qbert was made by stupid people. And it's not the least bit interesting. And then later levels, as we were about to see, there are buttons that you have to jump on twice to make them disappear and um, there's not much else to the game it's fairly straightforward it's fairly simplistic pretty goddamn boring and, and my, my patience is wearing thin at this point <laughs> and uh, we're gonna move on to the next game right about now earn stars ooh how exciting you push these buttons, these UFO things, which will generate an energy shield, which will suck in all the green stars, which are the, the, apparently the only things that you have to suck in in order to clear a level. The red stars that fly by are just bonus points, and this is really exciting and really... <laughs> are, are, you, are you for real? <laughs> what kind of entertainment value do you, do you expect to get? I mean, seriously. The old plug-and-play things that I played from, like, years ago when they had, like, cheap NES knockoff games were a little more involved, shall we say, and a little more creative for whatever that's worth. This is just rubbish. Next. Cylinders. You match the cylinder with the same number as the pipe, and then you turn the faucet, and then the thing fills the thing with the other thing. And this is so goddamn tedious. You know, I'm dubbing this for you know past like I don't know how long, and I was playing all these games for who knows how long straight. 
You know, and if you're getting bored just watching this, believe me, you're not as bored as I was playing these stupid things. One or two at a time, maybe, but all... God, I lost count. Can we, get, can, can we just move on to the next thing, please? Thanks. Funny face! So I guess you gotta flip the cards so that all the cards have funny faces, and, um... Hooray! I won! Moving on to the next game! Happy smile. Let me guess, it's the same as the other game, right? Where you gotta flip the things, and yeah. Yeah, and I fucked that up. The, the easiest move to make, and I fucked that up. Okay, fuck this. Moving on. Past Maze Road. You're a little bubble, and you have to reach the drain on top while avoiding the holes. And, um, yeah. So I was just testing that. So yeah, you're the little bubble, you have to make it to the drain without touching the holes, and sometimes there's obstacles, and um... Same thing that you've played in a bunch of other games. A bit of a variation. And how do we do this? Well, I just figured out that you can actually wrap around to the other side, sort of warp to the other side, and, and that's that's kind of a nice idea, I guess. So now everything moves upwards, so you gotta maneuver around that, and, um... Uh, yeah, uh, very, very exciting. He lied. And, um... Yeah, I got nothing. Next. Return Capsule, the last puzzle game at long last. Uh... Yeah, that would be easy to end on that note, but, uh... Nonetheless, we will try again. Basically, you have to guide your uh, capsule thing to the green thing, and you can only land on the blocks, and I fucked up again. Sorry about that. At this point, my brain is pretty much dead. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that would be as easy. That would be the best thing I could do at this point, but uh, let's try and at least clear this particular level, the last level of the last puzzle game. Uh, as it were, and, uh, you know, just be done with it. And, uh, yay, we've completed level, and, uh, let's escape from the puzzle section and move on to the next one. Okay, before moving on any further, let's go on a little trip down memory lane back to 2011, which was the last time I touched a Dream Gear product. And what we have here is the Dream Gear plug-and-play system, which had 50 games in one thing. It had a fake analog stick, which was actually more of a digital stick. It had a DNA button and a couple turbo buttons, and it had 50 games. Far less games than what you have on here, but I'd argue that while the games themselves aren't any good, they, I will say, looking back, they seem to be of much better quality than what we're getting here. I thought I'd bring that up because, you know, it's been a few years, you figure with better technology they'd come up with better games, but thus far, that's not been the case. Should be noted that Dream Gear has made a number of these plug-and-play systems, including one that looks like a little arcade cabinet, which might seem a bit awkward to play with. And for anyone wondering, no, I will not be looking at these. One of these bloody things is more than enough for me. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Anyways, back to the rest of the video. So the puzzle section can go fuck itself for all I care, and we're going to move on to the table section. Which is a little more varied, actually. We're starting off with 100 floors, which is basically, uh, you guide your little bonhomme down the floors, I guess. You know, the little segments. Some of these uh, flip over, some of these bounce you, and then there are the conveyor belts. Some of them have spikes, which will chip off a few hearts off your life meter. And if you run out of hearts, you die. But then, if you fall down, you also die, and that's rather unfortunate. There's a high score table, at least, so if you... There's some incentive to try and put in a good effort. Not much incentive, because this doesn't save your high scores anyways. There's no battery backup or anything like that. 
but the thought counts at least. It, it, it resembles, it somewhat resembles a actual game that could be interesting and uh, challenging and fun and something like that. Not saying that it is, but it, it could resemble that. The spikes doesn't kill you, the crushing by the ceiling, the laser beam doesn't kill you, it just drains some hearts and your health regenerates so you don't have to worry about uh, losing that much health. This isn't that bad. Uh, this is somewhat of an enjoyable game, I, I guess. Not some... It, w it won't replace uh, your usual portable game or anything like that or whatever simplistic fare you could think of, but it's not bad. It's competently made, at least. So, uh... We'll just let the footage play. I'm curious to see how far I went. Probably not that far, but at least, you know, I, I made it to the top ten, the top five. You know, it would be funny if there was a top ten here. Probably, uh, who knows? Boing, 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 boing. Sound effects are obnoxious. Um, lost a bit of health there. That's not bad. Uh, not much else to it. Oh, 17 floors, and, uh, yeah, number 5, it's better than nothing, much like Mighty Number 9. And we're gonna move on to the next game, which is Sub Warfare. The premise of this game is fairly straightforward. You control a tanker and you drop bombs into the sea, blowing up the subs. Try to avoid getting shot by the subs. There's an ammo counter, but it regenerates automatically after a while. And uh, apparently the subs have photon torpedoes, so I, gu I guess that's a thing. It's a fairly simplistic, fairly rudimentary, rather bland game that won't hold your interest for very long. And for the sake of time and sanity of everybody involved, we're going to move on to the next game, which is... But Bull Destroyer! I have a feeling this is a Buster Brothers clone. And, and yes, that's exactly what it is. It's a Buster Brothers clone. Oh, goody. Yay. It's not much else to it. It's a Buster Brothers clone. If you're familiar with Buster Brothers, you're familiar with this. Oh, well, there, there you go. There's a game I'm remotely familiar with. It's funny, I've never really played an actual Buster Brothers game, mostly the knockoffs, so... Hopefully this is not indicative of a proper Buster Brothers game, because if it is... Oh boy. Anyways, moving on. Next up we have Balloon Shooting, and this is a basic shmup, or shooter, sort. You basically shoot little balls at balloons to pop them, and you have to pop a certain number of balloons to uh, clear the level, and then you move on to the next level, and... You basically do pretty much the same thing, and there are power-ups that gives you, like, enhancements, like, uh rapid shots and spread shots and things of that nature because god forbid you need a spread shot to pop fucking balloons and if you let a balloon escape you you lose some health and if you lose all your health uh, the game ends obviously the fairly simple fairly competent little game you could get some mild enjoyment out of this if you got nothing better to play uh, not much else to say in this regard so uh, we'll, we'll move on to the next game which is um, Upstairs, ooh, basically a reversal of the 100 Floors game where you have to make your way upwards by jumping on platforms. You hold down the button to charge your jumps by filling the meter, and if the more energy is stored, the higher your jumps. Some platforms will spring you up and give you higher, more height, and then there's conveyor belts, and sometimes you could grab onto these balloons for an easy way up, but if you hold onto the balloon for too long, it'll explode and you die. Of course, you die if you fall off the screen as well. A uh, pretty straightforward game, and the music here is pretty catchy as well, so... Hey, that's not bad. Anyways, moving on. Maze Combination, and oh, fuck off. Another puzzle game? Really? I thought we were done with this. Okay, whatever. Anyways, you move the tiles with the buttons, and the bottom thing has to match the top thing. And it's really not all that interesting. You have only have ten moves to do the thing, get it properly, otherwise you lose. And the music is depressing, and... Oh, God, what? This is, this is, look, I like me a good puzzle game, keyword being a good puzzle game. Let's just get this over with and move on to the next game. Everyone's happy except for me. Fuck you. Next. Precipice and, oh, fuck you. 
For fuck's sake. So you, you gotta guide the kid from one side to the other, but they're gonna give you random pieces, and on top of that, there's no preview to know what the next piece is gonna be, so you can't plan ahead, and... and, and oh, for fuck's sake. No, I've n I haven't been able to figure out how this works. Alright, I don't know if you're able to rotate or what are the... No, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm moving on to the next thing. I, I, I don't care. Next. Monkeys. And, uh, yeah, monkeys certainly came up with the last two games. Basically, bananas are falling from the sky. You shoot the bananas with your, your thing and you give them to the monkeys and they give you hearts. Some of the monks, monkeys go on fire. I'm not quite sure what you're supposed to do, but I just shoot the bananas and toss them at the monkeys and, and that you know, one of them went away and uh, well I've got nothing so let's just move on and get this over with happy night notice how a lot of games are happy except for the guy playing them so you control a little chick and you basically have to land on uh, vehicles without you know land on the cars and stuff and not get you know you don't want to do that so basically you hop on cars you have a limited uh, floating ability where you can basically hop in the air so long as you have a meter full. And if you run into things, uh, it drains your meter. But uh, this is a fairly straightforward, a fairly simplistic, sort of a flappy birds for uh, babies, if you want to go that particular route. Certainly an easier game, but still has its fair share of challenge. Nice little casual game that uh, the youngins could get into, I guess. And, you know, the jug sort of helps in replenishing the health so you can stay airborne a little longer. I've passed 20 cars. That's exciting. And, uh, gotta say, this was pretty fun, actually. So we're gonna move, we're gonna move on to the next game, Bumper Balls. The concept here is fairly simple. You have a bunch of marbles on the thing. The computer has a bunch of marbles on the thing. You basically have to knock your opponent's marbles off the board and he has more marbles than you. That, that kind of sucks. Also, he has better aiming. So you move your cursor on the thing, you press, you click on the thing, and then you use the trajectory and you charge the meter. The, obviously, the more energy you have, the stronger your shot. And look at that, I knocked off two marbles, and he knocked off, I only went down to 2-2. Two, two. Um, I have a feeling this is probably best, much more, okay, there goes the ball, and then, and, and, okay, I lost. Well, that's unfortunate. Next, Castle Smasher. This is basically Angry Birds with castles and stones instead of birds and pigs and wooden planks and that sort of thing. Basically, you use the D-pad to aim your shots and you hold down the button to charge your shots, obviously to try and get the most damage done. And uh, if you, your stone manages to collect any pickups, you'll get more stones. And if you run out of stones before you destroy the castle, the game ends, pretty much. Fairly straightforward concept. It works well enough, I guess. But, um, yeah. Next. Escape the trap. You're a teddy bear stuck in a hole and you only have this monkey dropping bricks on you. You basically move around, the monkey follows you around, and after a while, the monkey drops the item. Sometimes it's a bomb, sometimes it's something you could climb. There's no way to control the descent of the uh, blocks. You just have to wait out until the monkey feels like dropping things on you and try not to get crushed by the objects. It's very boring, very tedious. Uh, I'm trapped, obviously, so I can't escape because I'm an idiot. I don't know how, but, but look, this isn't very fun one way or another, so. Next. Spin match. <sighs> Of course, another puzzle game. Basically, you have to match up the left image with the right image, and you do this by spinning the little circle things. It took me a while to figure out, but I was getting the hang of it before the time ran out. So, yeah. Next. Herculean guy. Hmm. Very Herculean. But you can push blocks and move and maneuver them, I guess, so that's something. You can use the blocks to knock the enemies off the board, or kill them. That kind of works too. And you can also blow up blocks too. 
Okay. Uh, so we have, we're getting you. So you move around very slowly because you're Herculean, but you move like a tank. And that's okay. We're gonna kill this thing with a uh, green brick. I could go for the power up, but I'm much too slow, so I'm not gonna bother. This guy is following me. This guy's never gonna leave me alone. Let's ring around the blocks, I guess. And uh, oh. Okay, uh, this is getting boring. Let's move on to the next game, please. Thank you. Cartoon Puzzle. It's a sliding puzzle game where you slide the things around. Fuck you. Gold Miner. Basically, you're an old man who has to use a hook to grab onto the gold nuggets. Although, there's also silver nuggets and copper nuggets. I guess they're copper. They could be brown, red, reddish turds or something like that. I don't know. This is an incredibly slow hook, but I guess that's what happens when you have to use a hook to go through a solid matter. The facing properties kind of have to take into effect there. And of course you have a time limit to get all the nuggets and stuff. And um, yeah, this is very uh, slow and tedious, but I guess that's to be expected because you're an elderly man. You're not that strong. Your best days are behind you. And <laughs> 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 uh, it sounds pretty morbid, I'm sure, but uh, this is the most entertainment I've been getting so far. So. <laughs> anyway, later levels introduce pickups that you could pick up. I picked up a dynamite and I could use that to blow up the piece of nugget, which doesn't get me any points, so that's kind of pointless. There are slightly larger rocks that you could pick up with your hook, and uh, that's all there is to it pretty straightforward, ultimately doesn't hold your interest for a long while. I think this would have been better off with a tablet. Gee whiz, no wonder they're called table games. Anyways, next game. Jumping eggs. A novel concept if there ever was one. You basically have to line up your shots with the eggs so that they land on the next basket and if they fall you lose an egg and if you lose all your eggs or if you just just fall off and stuff, you get that game over or something. I don't know. Uh, simplistic, straightforward. And if you're playing this on the TV out, the screen glitches. There's no glitches like this if you're playing this on the handheld screen itself. It just happens when you're you know, playing on the screen, probably because I don't have the right wires. But then again, I don't care enough to get the proper wires. They probably cost an arm and a leg anyways. Most things do. And moving on. X training. I have no flipping clue on what you're supposed to do here. You're an apple, a bunch of dots come at you and your apple explodes and stuff. Seriously, what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> okay, so I so we'll see I, I failed the X training and we'll move on to the next game which is Super Pizza. There we go, Super Pizza. This is a little more straightforward. You basically have a bunch of ingredients and you try to match up the left pizza with what's on the right pizza. And they give you the exact ingredients, I guess. Um, I don't know, fairly straightforward affair, I guess. And uh, but, but it's kind of close, good, too bad, not, not bad, not bad, perfect. 49% accuracy and it's a game over. Ah, that's unfortunate. Next! Eat Bean. It's sort of a Suedo Pac-Man clone where you try and eat all the fruit in the maze and all that jazz. If you press the B button, you'll use up a present and power yourself up, at which point, which I didn't do in the video here, you could eat up your opponent, who will probably regenerate later. Anyways, it's a fairly straightforward concept. Also fairly boring, but nonetheless. Oh, and by the way, you have a time limit, so, you know, because that's what a Pac-Man clone needs, a time limit to uh, eat all the beans and, and just, I don't know, whatever. Next. Block construction. It's an image. You have a bunch of blocks on a conveyor belt, sort of reminiscent of Tetris pieces, and you use the pieces to fill in the image. Try not to get any blocks outside the image, because it won't work, and I fucked up there royally. <laughs> This is all first time footage, you know, full disclaimer, so you could rotate the pieces at the very least, but uh, 
Yeah, it's sort of like one of the modes in that Tetris party game. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how to best describe that mode, but uh, here's some footage to better explain it for me. Shadow. Fill the shadow areas with blocks to form a picture within three minutes or we're all dead. Try not to have any blocks outside the shadowed area or you'll be penalized. In this case, pen the penalty comes in the form of losing a point for each block that falls off the conveyor belt. You do have a couple hammers to clear one block of a hammer, so that's something I guess. But uh... Yeah, uh, me no care. Anyways, next. Next up, we have Fruit Family, and this should be... Oh, fuck you. No, we're not playing another tile fucking puzzle. Oh, fuck off. No, fuck you. We're not playing another tile game. Get this shit off my fucking screen. And there we go. Okay, whatever. Wonderful pom-pom. <laughs> okay, that was that was pretty bad. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we died. Okay, that's unfortunate. Anyways, you control a little, little blob thing and, and you lay bombs to kill these smaller blobs. And every so often the screen will change color and, and you'll have more bombs. You only have a limited number of bombs, you have a limited number of hearts, but at least you could have, you could take all the time in the world to clear these little things and something. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll tell you what, folks, if I wanted to play a game with bombs, I'll just stick with Bomberman. That's the only one that comes to mind, actually, let's be honest. <laughs> Next! Nimble Stone. This is one of those games where you have to guide a stone from one side of the board to another side while avoiding all the hazards that might potentially kill you. And uh, this is one of those games that keep tracks of how many times you died because of... There we go. Uh, wouldn't be uh, one of those games without that. Anyways, the deaths are rather uh, quick and painless, and so is the regeneration, so you don't have to waste too much time trying to get from point A to point B. Uh, I don't like these sort of games when they're done well, and this is, at the very least, it's competently done, so not much to say there. Anyways, moving on to the next game, which is... Bomb Man! Oh look, it's a Bomberman knockoff! Gee, it's almost as if I planned this ahead of time! Except I really didn't, because I recorded the footage months ago, and I'm doing it months later, and this is just as much of a surprise to me as it is to you. Honest. Yeah, so it's Bomberman, except not not quite as good, and kind of slower than even the first Bomberman that came out on the NES. Which wasn't actually the first Bomberman, but it is better than the very first Bomberman, back when Bomberman had a hat. And I won, and the map changes slightly. It's it, it's not bad, it's completely done, but it kind of makes you wish you were playing the real Bomberman and not this poor man's knockoff. Ah, I gained a boost of speed at least, that's something I guess. Next. Block Squad. You have a bunch of blocks, you have to position them in, in a way so that the thing on the left will make it to the thing on the right, and... That's really all there is to it. If you fuck up, you could always reset the puzzle, and, um... Mind you, if you screw up, you could always, you know, play something else. That 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 would be preferable. This isn't that exciting a game. It's fairly rudimentary. It's, um... It's actually quite boring. Anyways, there's a the little boy flying from block to block. Success! If only there was a much better game. So now there's the second level, but they don't tell you how to position the things. You're left to figure that out on your own, and that's... that's Yeah, anyways. Moving on. Overmaze! This is a fairly decent idea, actually. Fairly ingenious. You move the solid object away from the red block as it makes it wave to the green block. It's fairly straightforward. Basically, the idea is that the red block cannot touch the solid object that you have control over, because if it does, the whole thing resets and uh, you have to start all over again. You have a life meter for some reason, but, uh, uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, anyways. Oh, you also have these, uh, energy fields that shrink, so you're also timed in a way. But, uh, yeah, I'm bored of this. Next. Last game on the table section is four boxes, and I'm willing to bet it's a puzzle game. What a shock! <laughs> okay, so you have to you have these falling block things, and you stick them onto the center thing, 
and if the blocks fall to the other side, you get a skull block. Unfortunately, sometimes you'll be getting colored blocks that doesn't apply and you're stuck with whatever and I'm trying to move and, and it's not doing a good job. Um, anyways, if you match up like four colored blocks of this kind, they disappear. It's much like a traditional puzzle game of sorts. And uh, I haven't been able to get the hang of this. Playing pretty badly, I'll, I'll admit that much. And... Um, yeah, so, uh, sorry everybody, but, uh, I, uh, oh, we, we cleared some blocks away, so that's kind of a good thing. I never did quite got the, the whole goal of what you're supposed to do, you know, whether you're supposed to clear away all the blocks that you added there yourself, but, uh, uh nonetheless, I guess that's, that's something, I suppose. <laughs> We got the green things, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of bored of this now, so anyways, moving on. And that concludes the uh, table games, for lack of a better term. 124 games down, 96 to go, and as you can see from this indicator here, the batteries are almost dead. So if you're wondering how this thing lets you know if the batteries are dying, there you go. There's an on-screen prompt. And this would appear also if this were plugged to the TV, which is not because I have to change the batteries. I should probably get around to that so I could continue the rest of it, I guess. Anyways, just thought I'd show that off. Back to the proper gameplay footage. Alright, because I'm not much of a, a sports guy, we'll get the sports games out of the way first. So, there's only 19 of them. First off, we have Rally, which is a racing game of sorts. You drive a uh, green, lime green van. Rather poorly, because the steering is not all that great, but then again, a racing game in general is not all that great. But it is somewhat functional, I, I guess. Anyways, pretty standard uh, racing game. You try to reach the end of the track and try to finish at first. If not, at least the top three positions, then you move on to the next race. If you don't qualify, you it's a game over, obviously. Uh, this is a really, really boring racing game. Not much to it. There's not any cool shit you could do here. Um, I wish I could say it looks pretty, but... Uh, um, yeah, I got nothing else to say about this one, so let's move on to the next game, which is GT Racing, which is, well, wouldn't you know it, it's the same as the Rally game, except now you're dry, you're seeing it from inside the car, so you don't know what your car looks like, but presumably it looks like all the other cars on here. And you can see that bit of an artifacting on screen, because the AV cable isn't worth a damn, but then again, the AV cable wasn't designed for this particular unit, I have to recycle it from some other unit, but uh, nonetheless the racing is pretty much the same thing except you have laps and looped tracks and disembodied hands for uh, some reason. I guess that's an extra accessory? Maybe? I don't know. Who cares? Next. Highway Driving. This is an overhead driving game where you have 40 seconds to make it from one end of the highway to the other while avoiding all the oncoming traffic. I will be completely honest to you, since I'm not particularly that good with driving games to begin with. Um, yeah, I couldn't get the knack for this one, so we're not going to see much of it, so we're moving on to the next game. Sorry. Track Racing. Well, they have to get their racing games out of the way now, so I might as well get it out of the way at the beginning. Uh, this is sort of a Micro Machines uh, sort of thing where you have a choice of multiple cars to choose from, which is kind of nice. Unfortunately, the control is kind of rubbish. Hard to control your vehicle, regardless of what car you choose. And uh, I will be honest with you, I am not that good with these sorts of games when they're done well, and this is certainly not done well. This is kind of slow, sluggish, uh, a sloth to play. And I also like how you don't have a rank, but rather a renack. It's probably a foreigner thing, I don't know, but nonetheless, there you, there you go. 
Anyways, moving on. Motorboat. Hey, why not another racing game? Only with motorboats this time. You control the boat on the left, if you couldn't tell. And the goal is to make it to the finish line before the boat on the right makes it there first. There are speed boosts to give you a boost of speed, there are obstacles to slow you down, and there are ramps to give you airtime, and then there are pickups to give you points if you happen to run over them. And the music is pretty fucking annoying at this point, but uh, that's par for the course. Control's not all that great, but it is somewhat playable. It's alright, I guess. It works well enough, and there's not much else I could say here. And this is probably the last racing game that we're going to see in a row. Because the next game is going to be... Mini Soccer! I was expecting a shootout sort of thing, but instead I got a Pong clone, where the goal is to kill all the coins before bringing down the shield and scoring a goal. Note that the ball went through me because I forgot to kick the ball, which is an important thing because that's what you do in soccer. You kick the ball and try to get it to the goal. I don't recall the part in soccer where you have to destroy coins to bring down a defensive shield that allows you to score a goal in the net, but there you go. It's a Pong clone on it with a D-pad, and I don't like Pong clones with a D-pad or paddle games in general with a D-pad because a D-pad is not a good substitute for a paddle controller. But they did try to make that bearable here by making the ball move really, really slow. Also, unless you destroy the coins, the barrier keeps the ball from going past the goal and you can't score any goals. Although for some reason you have like a health beater or something, I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is actually kind of boring now that I think about it. I would have preferred the shootout game. Or maybe I'm jinxing myself, I don't know. Anyways, next game. Table football, or as we call it, foosball. Nice thing about this game is you get to choose which country you get to play as, which doesn't mean much because all the teams play the same way. The only difference is the color that you get to play. Oh, and you get to choose your layout, much like a proper soccer game. But unlike a proper soccer game, this is a foosball table, so it really doesn't matter. Anyways, this is ostensibly a pong game. You try to get the ball into the net, and the ball moves in one speed. And always in one speed. Uh... It's foosball, pretty much. Albeit not a particularly good version of it, but foosball nonetheless, so I guess there's some entertainment to be had here. Although honestly, kinda wish that uh kinda wish you could do two players with this, but I guess not. Yeah, but then again if you wanted two players you'd try and find an actual foosball table and not play something like this. There's probably a video game equivalent somewhere. You could probably find it better. It'd probably be a lot better than this actually. And I'm um, actually doing pretty quite well, actually. So, that's something? I don't know, I, have, I got nothing else. Next. Next up we have archery, and it's archery. You you move your little button around and you, you know, you press the button, and that brings up a little meter that you could charge, and uh, you shoot your arrow. Take the wind into account, because that, you know, plays havoc with your shots. All the while taking into account the speed of the moving bullseye and your AOK, -okay, I guess. It's not much to it. It's fairly straightforward. I like, I, but in all fairness, I kind of like this better than the archery game that's in track and field on the NES. So that's something, I guess. Anyways, next. Next up, we have Crazy Push. You control a mutant demon thing, and you have to push all these babies off the sheet of ice. There's pickups that you can pick up that will give you hammers and things of that nature, and basically, you know, whoever survives the pushing off the sheet of ice uh, wins and moves on to the next round, which has different uh, terrains and that sort of thing. I don't know how this is a sport, but there you go. You know, if you don't like babies, you could push them off the into the ice-cold water and watch them die before they slowly regenerate after they lose one of their hearts. Um, yeah, I've got nothing, so let's move on. Motocross. You'd think this is a racing game, but it really isn't. You ride a motocrossing thing, and the cross thing, you have to reach the goal before time runs out, and you have to avoid the uh, obstacles, obviously. Not much else to it. Uh, there's pickups to give you a couple of extra seconds, and that's about all there is to it. You can move faster if you want. You only have one fixed height in jumping, and... Uh, fairly simplistic, fairly straightforward. There's different stages you could go through if you could care for that sort of thing. Um, not much else to it. It's 
functional, if nothing else. Not particularly fantastic, but it works the way it's supposed to, I guess, I suppose. Kinda, sort of. Anyways, I'm, I'm waiting for a part where the guy falls over and we could laugh at him. <laughs> and he explodes. That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> Anyways, next game. Dodgeball. You're familiar with Dodgeball, I'm assuming. It's a time honored uh, game that's played at elementary schools, at least around my part of the woods. You pick up balls, you toss them at your opponents in an attempt to hit them, and the goal is to hit them enough so that their meter drains, and whoever's meter drains first loses. Sometimes balls will have certain effects, and I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to uh, find any interest in this game because A, I don't care for dodgeball, and B, I don't care for the teams on in front of me. There, you got blue alien things, and the two kids, the two twins in front, are probably the most awkward-looking twins I've ever seen. Um, uh, there are bombs here. That's 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 something, I guess. And um, sorry, I'm not showing much enthusiasm, but there's I don't know. I've got nothing. Next, beach volleyball. The funny thing is, it looks nothing like a beach, but there you go. You get to pick your player. All of them play the same way. And the funny thing about this, it's volleyball, pretty much. You move your characters back and forth. You try to score any other thing. It's uh, volleyball on the 2D plane. Oh, you can jump and, and spike the balls, I guess. That's kind of fun. And uh, I've got nothing. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is fairly, uh, fuck it. Next. Flag match. You and an opponent have to plant flags on the board, and whoever has the most flags planted by the time, time expires wins. Pretty much. I have no idea how this constitutes a sport, but there you go. It's probably a sport in some part of the world, and I probably should be a little more open to such ideas. Uh, this is kind of boring. Kind of lame. And not that great. Uh, got don't have much else to say. You're just pining for time, I guess. Not that nothing. Next, Japanese sumo. Oh look, it's the player select screen from Streets of Rage, except replaced with Japanese sumo guys or something. I'm gonna pick the purple guy, and oh, he's the same as everybody else except different tights. I, I guess. Okay. Anyways, it's a fighting game of sorts where you headbutt the other guy, you can drain him of health to win, or you could just knock him out of the ring, and uh, that works too. Uh, fairly straightforward, there's not much to it, and um, I, I imagine all the sumo wrestlers play the same way anyways, and uh, I won already. Hmm. Eh, it's okay. It's, it's not much, but it's something, I guess, and this headbutt is way too effective in the way I see it. Nonetheless, here we go. You you play through it. You, you fight the other sumo guys. It's much like the mini fighter thing. Uh, probably not as sophisticated. This one's alright, I guess. Next. Tanks PK. Uh, this doesn't look like a sport either, but there you go. Um, yeah, so you, you control a tank. You move your tank around. You control the arc of your tank. You control the power of the shot. And you try to blow up the other tank, where, and that's determined by the energy meter, I guess. It's sort of like a poor man's Scorched Earth, and in all honesty, I'd much rather be playing Scorched Earth. It is the mother of all games, after all. Next. Piggy Golf, otherwise known as Mini Golf from a 2D side view perspective. You control the arc of the shot, you control the power of your shot, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Much like a traditional golf game, I'm not particularly good at it, but it works well enough, I suppose. It's not bad. Uh, no real complaints otherwise, so... Yeah. Next. Horse racing. Oh, I was wrong. There is was another r racing game here. But now it's horse racing, steeplechase, that sort of thing. You get to pick your horse, and the idea is you have to control the pace of your horse, and depending on how much energy. Unfortunately, your horse will run out of energy, and then eventually, no matter how well you do, all the other horses will catch up with you, and you'll fall behind, and you'll lose, and 
uh, if there's a rhythm and a way to actually win this thing, I haven't discovered it and I could care less, in all honesty. Next, balance ball. You control a balance ball, I guess, or a, what looks like a marble, and you guide it to the exit hole. Try to avoid the black holes because they will kill your marble thing. I don't know how this is a sport of any kind, but uh, there you go. It's a sport in some part of the world, probably just not mine. Next, finally the last sport game, Balloon Archer, and you get to pick your level. Basically, you have a limited number of arrows, you have to clear all the balloons, some levels have things that you could point at your arrow to deflect the shot, and uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, there's not much to it. Uh, not that great. You could reset the level if you want, but uh, that's all I really have. That's the last sports game. That's all I gotta look at, and uh, let's move on to something else. Okay, so we've done all the sports games. Let's uh, let's actually change gears and let's go adventure because that has fewer games too. First off, we got Super Memory, which is a memory game of sorts. You pick the two cards, so you look at the cards, and then you pick the two cards that match the cards and try to memorize it. And pretty straightforward. Later levels have more cards and it's a little more complex and mixes things up a bit. And uh, not much else to it. It's a pretty straightforward memory game. It, it's simple. It's well executed. That's about all I've got. Every miss you have, you lose a heart. That sort of thing, or half a heart, actually. But uh, that's all the that's all there is to it. Moving on to the next game. Blackjack. It's blackjack, the popular casino game that you play at casinos and stuff. If you know how to play blackjack, it's pretty much the same deal here. If you don't, you draw cards and you try not to get over 21, but you try to get more than your opponent because that what makes you win if you get if he has more than you or if he goes over 21 or something. It's fucking blackjack. Next, gather eggs. Basically, you try to catch eggs. Pretty straightforward. Make sure the eggs hit the blanket that you're holding, otherwise it doesn't count. Catch all the white eggs, avoid the green rotten eggs, and you'll be fine. If enough eggs hit the floor, you lose all your lives, and the game ends. Pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. Uh, not much else to it. Uh, next. Cups changing. It's the classic cup game where you find the cup with the object after everything gets switched around. Pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. More cups are added in later levels. I don't know why I'm taking more than 10 seconds to explain this to you. Moving on. Now this next game is just fucking stupid. Polish slot machine? You're putting in a slot machine game on something like this? Why? You're not winning anything. What do you win? What? What do you win? Fuck all. I get if it's a if it's part of a bigger game. Yes, you could win stuff beneficial to your main game, but it, something like this? Why? How stupid do you have to? Uh, next, follow me. Basically, a little angel thing jumps around the board, and you have to follow it. And you have to follow its precise movements because if you veer off course, you will die. Oh, oh that's you, and you fail. That's that's unfortunate. Unfortunate. Anyways, you you follow the angel thing around. She goes around a path, and you have to follow it. And you try to memorize the path she took as best as possible because, again, if you veer off course, you will fail. And uh, there you go. That's the exit. Later levels have more complex patterns and all that stuff. And there's enemies you have to avoid. Um, yeah, this is a thing that's in the game. So, next. On fire. Basically, you have to light the uh, the two things, the two brown things on fire, to start a fire and try not to get burned by anything else. Uh, the grass patches kind of, you know, screw you over there for some reason, but that's okay. Um, don't catch fire. It took me a while to figure out, but you have to walk along the, the, the path in order to, uh, in order to catch fire without actually catching yourself on fire. Later levels are complex, but uh, the game's too boring for me and uh, I just gave up after a while. Next! The Good Fisherman! Man, that doesn't look like a man. That looks like a dog, a berry, a berry, a beaver or something. I don't know, I don't care. Anyways, you try to catch the fish. 
You try to catch fish by hooking the hook to their mouths, not any part of their body, otherwise the collision detection doesn't detect the collision. And then he eats it raw, so he likes sushi, I guess, I don't know. I'm supposed to find a funny quip, the, uh, the, the video capture is crap. And the game is not much better, um... Uh, there's a time limit too, by the way, so if you clear the fish before time runs out, you move on to the next level. There are different, there's different bits of scenery. Uh, nobody cares. Next! Next up, we have Open Gold Box. First, you get to choose from either Pebble Flintstone or three of her illegitimate clones. They all play the same way. It's pretty much a guessing game where you pick a chest and you either get some extra points of varying kinds or you lose points. If you if you get a uh, you get a little animation if you get the wrong box, one of the, oh, no that's unfortunate. If you get a bomb, the round ends. And you move on to the next round where there are more chests for you to open and more presumably more opportunities to score big points. And that's all there is to it. You know, Pebbles is happy when she gets gold. Pebbles is sad when a bomb explodes in her face and turns her into a black girl. That's that's kind of racist, isn't it? But whatever. Next up we have Gas Station, where you run a gas station. Cars will show up and you get to pump them up and hopefully get some money out of it. Sometimes they'll want food and stuff like that and that'll appear on the uh, bar over there. Uh, never liked this sort of game when it was done well and it's compounded by the fact that you have to use a chunky d-pad to move the mouse cursor around. So uh, it's alright if you care for that sort of thing I guess, but not for me. Next. Cake store. Much like the gas station, except now you run a little cake store. Customers will show up, and basically you have to get the raw dough into one of the three machines that will either produce a piece of beef, a loaf of bread, or another loaf of bread. Uh, again, much like the other game, you got to keep people happy and that sort of stuff, and, and, and try not to overcook the food because otherwise they will turn black and you lose money and customers and stuff like that and again I don't care for this sort of thing next next up we have brain age test and basically the idea here is that a bunch of chipmunks will appear then a mushroom house will fall from the sky and then some chipmunks will come into the house and come out of the house and then you have to guess how many chipmunks are still in the house and if you get it right great you that's fine if not you whatever anyways uh, some funky stuff is happening in that mushroom house, that's for sure. And, um, look, if you wanted a proper test of your Brain Age, or whatever the case may be, you would have bought Brain Age for the Nintendo DS, or Brain Age 2. That's actually pretty good, too. Next! Next up, we have Forest Adventure, and this is a platformer, where you guide a gnome thing to the right, uh, shooting your candy things at enemies to stun them momentarily, all the while trying not to fall into the pit below and, and stuff like that and avoiding hazards. Every once in a while you'll come across a mini boss that you could use your candies to kill. Funny how it kills the big monsters but the little monsters are only stunned momentarily. And uh, you know you could take multiple hits, collect coins for extra points. There are ends of the levels, there are multiple levels with various designs but it's just a color change here and there and that's about it and there are moving platforms, so there's not much to it. It's a fairly straightforward game. The jumping and the physics are, is kind of awkward, and there's pickups that you pick up which give you a momentary invincibility, that sort of thing, or just restore your life. And not much else to say here, it, it's, it, and you can't move to the left, much like in Super Mario Bros. Forgot about that one. Uh, I'm not really giving this my best effort, but nonetheless, it's alright, I guess. Oh, he died. Next! Next up, we have Pirate Landing. You shoot a pirate ship out of the cannon. <laughs> Aim your cannon and then, you know, hold the button down for, for determining your power, and then the pirate ship, you know, launches into the air. The more distance you cover, the more money you get, and you can use that money to buy upgrades so that your ship will be a little more effective at covering more distance. It's it's not bad. It has a ni decent set of customization, you know, if you can afford the money to do so, and each subsequent level marginally improves your chances of, of going someplace. I don't know what the ultimate point of this game is. Trying to reach the treasure, I guess, or something. I don't know. But in any event, uh, that's all I got. Next! Next up, we have Cafeteria. The idea here is that waitresses will walk down with food, and you have to use the arrows to guide the waitresses to the tables with the food. So, this waitress is carrying a pie, so you use the arrows to guide the waitress to the table with the pie. 
Not sure why you want to give a table with pi more pi, but there you go. A fairly standard, fairly straightforward game, not much to it. Um, uh, that's really all I have to say about that, to be honest with you. Next. Water Rescue! You're mo you move the three canoes that you have in the bottom and you try to catch all the people. If you hit, if the people hit the sides, they'll bounce up and you have to try and catch it before they hit the water. And, um, I don't know, that's it. These people take a good long while. To, you know, for, for people that need help to get out in a flaming boat, they're taking their sweet ass time to jump out. For fuck's sake, people, come on. There we go. One saved. That's fantastic. One saved. Another one saved. Come on. We know you love to be saved. I'm just going to drop you in the water because I don't like you. Fuck off. There we go. We get seven hearts. I don't know why. Why do we get seven hearts? Boom. Bounce off. Boom. That that caused a neck injury or something. Yay. Uh, I'm getting bored of this. Next. Next up, we have Hero Boy. Where you play as a kid dressed as a non-infringing superhero. Basically, use the button to fly into the air as much as you can. Try to avoid the objects or else you, you take damage. No, that's my fault. Basically, you have to rescue kids from burning houses and you put them on the floor to do that, just that. For some reason, all these houses are on fire, and the kid's taking his sweet ass time to go from ho one house to the other. But I guess the people are grateful nonetheless because, well, I, I don't know. They got no other superheroes in this universe. Anyways, you could keep the kid around if you want, but that doesn't really give you anything. Also, you can only carry one person at a time. So this hero doesn't mean, really mean much. You're trying to get the other person that's not working, and yeah, so you can't carry two people at a time for more points, you have to, you know, save one person at a time. That's kind of lousy. If this were a grown-up, he'd probably get more than one person in his or <laughs> Okay, uh, I got nothing. Next. Next up, we have Tower Defense. Pick a map from either a grassland or a snowland. The only difference is the terrain. I went with a grassland because I don't like snow. It's rough. It makes me... Cr oh, anyways, never mind. Anyways... You set up your towers to defend the terrain, and then you push the click the start button on the screen, and then the goal of the game is to keep the people that are coming out of the left side from reaching the right side. If they reach the right side, you lose a life, and then you lose all your lives, it's game over. But if you kill people with your towers, you get extra money, and if you earn enough money, you can either upgrade your towers to stronger forms, or you could get more towers and put them on the map, and increase your chances of defense. Uh, it's slow going at first, but it does get a bit more enjoyable once you've earned enough money to buy the upgrades, and it's actually quite a bit of strategy involved. So, it's... the it, you know what? I kind of like this one. I spent quite a bit of time on it. Probably more than I needed to for the purposes of this video, but, uh, hey, I actually enjoyed this one, all things considered. So, uh, yeah, can't complain. Next up, we have Ice Cream. Basically, you run an ice cream parlor and you have to serve ice cream to patrons before they get upset or something. And you have a time limit to reach your goal of $3,000 or something. Basically, it's, it's, a, it's a less than stellar version of Tapper. Probably a lamer version of Tapper if you remember that arcade game or Rupier Tapper if you remember it from the various Midway compilations re released in, you know, past couple decades. And it's not much else to it. You try to catch the cups before they fall off the table or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, uh, next. Finally, last game on the venture category is Gigi Cooking or Giggy Cooking. Basically, you cook a meal and stuff. You use proper utensils to cook whatever meals or peel whatever potatoes you need to be peeled. And you move on to the uh, next level when you're happy. Uh, there's not much else to it. Uh, personally, I'd rather be cooking in a real kitchen, by, the, by which I mean make a sandwich. And uh, yeah, not much else to it. We're done here. And she's happy we're done. Next. I'm endeavoring to film this with one hand, and uh, God knows why. That looks, uh, eh, uh, 
Oh, that's all I got. Fuck. Hmm. Oh, you probably want to move on to the next category. Um... So that does it for the venture games. Next up, we have the relaxation games. The first game we're going to be playing is Benthal Jewel, and it's essentially a columns clone. Columns, the classic Sega puzzle game where you have columns of jewels falling from the sky and you have to match up three of a kind to make them disappear, that sort of thing. If you're familiar with columns, you're pretty much familiar with this. It's pretty much the same game. On occasion, there, there'll be a shark that'll turn gray, and if you fill up your little uh, oxygen thing, you get like a, a, a special jewel or something like that. Uh, I'd go into more detail, but this didn't really hold my interest all that long. But then again, Columns is a game that I don't really play that much one way or another, so um, not much I could say there. Next! Next up, we have Linking Pet, which is a nuzzler puzzle game of sorts. Basically, there's the idea here is that you click on two uh, matching dogs touching each other and they explode. Like so. The thing is, you gotta do this when they're touching each other and then as you have more room, you can do this and that and, and, and that sort of thing. And the video speaks for itself. Uh, I, I, I don't know how this is supposed to be relaxing. It's putting me to sleep. So, if this was the Cure for Insomnia category, this would be perfectly valid, but, um... Eh, it's not bad. It's... It's simple. It works. Not much else I could add there. Uh, you can't do that. You have to do that whenever there's open space and, 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 well, um... Yeah, next. Next up, we have Homeward Journey, where you guide your sheep-dog thing to the flag by having it touch the things to keep it from walking off the board. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward, fairly boring. Next game. Next up we have Find Fault. Basically, you find the differences between the two pictures. And uh, that's pretty much it. I don't see how this is relaxing, but there you go. It's under the relax category instead of a puzzle category and, and yeah. Next! Next up we have Pair Match, which is essentially a clone of one of those Bejewel type games where you swap stones to make lines of like stones and make them disappear from the board and, and that sort of thing and then more of them come in. It's the kind of thing you play on mobile phones and that sort of thing. You know, people that, you know, sort of games that people care about for some reason. And, um, yeah, there's not much else I could say here. It's a pretty straightforward concept for those who care. And uh, that's all I really got to say about that. Next, our next game, Brick Blaster, sounds exactly like what it is. A breakout Arkanoid clone with a stiff D-pad. Eh. To be fair, it's not a bad looking breakout clone and it seems to play rather well, rather nicely. You have some power-ups here and there, some bonus points and, and some awkward sound effects. If this were be if this were being played with a paddle controller or even a computer mouse, this would be somewhat fun. But it's with a stiff D-pad, and it's kind of uh, it, it, it's playable, but not preferable. And that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Next game on the list, we have Mini B, and this is a Space Invaders clone. Because when I think of games of relaxation, I think Space Invaders. Although, to be fair, this is a fairly simplistic version of Space Invaders. That's nowhere near as soul-crushingly difficult. I like how the bees just fall on the ground when you shoot them down, and, you know, each level has a couple ways, and then you have a boss fight, which is essentially just a big bee that drops down little bees and, and that sort of thing. And, uh, it's a fairly straightforward, fairly competent version of a Space Invaders knockoff clone thing, so... Eh, it's okay, but uh, I don't see how this is very relaxing. Next game, we have Cartoon Match. This is another puzzle game type thing. 
Uh, basically, the whole idea is you match up the top side of the face with the bottom side of the face and it disappears. Um, and then more of these blocks come down and, and, and impede your progress, I guess. And that, 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 that sort of thing, you know. That, you know it, it's the typical puzzle game of this sort. Uh, not much to it. It's fairly boring, it's not holding my interest, and I'm falling asleep, so... Moving on. Next up we have 30 Degree, where you have to travel 2,000 meters down a slope within a minute, or else you lose. You could control the uh, speed of your barrel rolling capabilities and, 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 and try not to hit the objects because you'll fall over and, and you'll slow down and try to avoid the birds, which I was never able to do. And, um, and I don't see how this is very relaxing. The Turbo Tunnel in Battletoads on the NES is much more relaxing than this. In fact, this music is kind of deceptively... You know, this could use a change in, ba in soundtrack. Hold on a second. Actually, that's not much of a step up, but uh, I don't know, maybe it'll suit the next game on our list. Pow Pow. Eh, maybe not. This is actually a little more relaxing than the other game, and probably not as hard, so let's switch it back to its regular soundtrack, which is a lot more cutesy and has some more cutesy sound effects, and, um... Um... Oh, oh poor thing. Yeah. Oh well, that's that's oh that uh, that's unfortunate, but um, yeah yeah. Anyways, I got nothing. I was walking on the puddle. Um, yeah, I got nothing. Next, next game is Diamond Forest, and <laughs> looks like another puzzle game, and that's exactly what it is. Anyways, you use your grappling hook thing to hook onto gems and you line them up with other gems of the same color to make them disappear, that sort of formula. Um, as you can probably tell, it took me a while to get the hang of this thing, but uh, I did get the hang of this after a while. It's a fairly functional, fairly good puzzle game and you can actually grab more of the, more the same kind if you want. Which allows for some nice chaining material, I, I guess, I suppose, you know. But, uh... You know what, this is a kind of a fun, relaxing game. Which is almost appropriate, I, I, I guess. And you could blow things up. That's, that's always a good... That's always a positive thing in my book. But, uh... Yeah, yeah, this isn't too bad. It's a nice little puzzle thing, and, 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 yeah. Next. Next we have Color Bead Loops, or as most people would like to call it, Zuma. Yeah, so this is pretty much a clone of Zuma. Works pretty much the same way. If you've played Zuma, you've played this. There's not much else to say here. Um, yeah. So, next. Next up we have Magnet Boy, and this is a fairly interesting game, if nothing else. You play a little uh, block boy thing, and you basically... Your one ability is that you could stick on these things with the green outlines. Which I guess is the magnet part of it, even though technically a magnet attracts itself to certain metals and that sort of thing. But the, I digress, this is... Controls are kinda hard to get used to at first, but once you get the hang of it... It's not that bad. Fairly simplistic. You try to make your way to the top, you collect the coins for a high score. Uh, wonderful. And I'm not doing very well here. Uh, but uh, we'll get there eventually. But not in this video. Next up we have Cake Party. And while there's no party, there's plenty of cake. Basically, you match up three cakes of a kind to make them disappear. And if you... Basically, you have to get the, the amount of points within the time allotted to move on to the next level. Uh, fairly straightforward, not much to it. Uh, obviously, the more you chain together, the more points you get, that sort of thing. And, um... Uh, yeah, it's not much to it, really. So, yeah. Next. 
After that non-party, it's Super Porter, where you play a porter who has to carry crates around to line them up on the ground so that they would disappear, all the while trying to avoid the crates above and trying not to get killed by the crates and that sort of thing. This is very, very stressful. I don't see how this is relaxing in the slightest, but uh, not regardless, it's in the relaxation portion of the compilation Go Gamer thing, and uh, I'm actually quite bored at this moment so uh, let's 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 move on let's leave this behind and move on I'm, I'm sure he'll be fine next up on the list we have paper planes where you guide your paper plane down a path covering the amount of distance required on top you have a few tries try not to crash into anything kind of hard to do because the controls are kind of loose and wonky and stuff but uh, if you get the hang of it you could probably have a good time with it but not much else. Next! Next up we have Palace Guardian which has you controlling a brick and the goal here is to clear the screen of enemies before being able to access the exit of the level. It's one of those games where you guide a thing to a wall and you have to go on the correct path to get everything right and all that stuff. If you care for that sort of thing that's great, if not then fine, whatever. Next. Next up on the list we have IQ Cow. This is basically a game where you have a couple of commands on the bottom and you have to position them on the tiles to guide your cow over to the trophy in order to clear the level. There's not much to it. it. Takes a while to figure out what you're supposed to do but once you get the hang of it it's not too bad but not the most exciting game you could find but at the very least it is very much a relaxing game which fits with the category here. So, uh, took me a while to figure out what you're supposed to do. You just put the arrows on these uh, tiles and uh, the cow, you know, walks into an arrow, changes direction, and uh, if you get it down right, great. If not, well, you could restart if you want. And that's all there is to the game. And there's multiple levels, sometimes there's keys involved, and um, I don't know what else I could say here. It's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. Um, I guess, I don't know. Alright, we're done. Next! Next up, we have Throw the Coins. Basically, you throw the coins at the pond and the fountain and stuff. You have a variety of things that's worth a bunch of points, and, you know, if you get it into the pot it's worth more points and stuff and um, I don't get the point of this but I guess it's relaxing it's also confusing it's confounding I guess it's straightforward basically you get the required amount of points you clear the level you move on to the next level and I don't care anyways moving on next next up air defense you control a tank thing, a turret thing, and you defend against falling enemies. It's a fairly basic, fairly simplistic shooter. There's not much to it. Sometimes you could shoot enemies before they even show up on the screen. <laughs> Which is, um... Um... Uh, it's relaxing, that much is for sure. You know, but, uh... Not very exciting. So... Pass. Next up we have Bubble Shooter, or as some people would like to call it, Puzzle Bobble, or as some people would like to call it, Bust a Move. This is sort of a slower, easier version of that game and uh, not much else to say there. It's pretty much Bust a Move, Puzzle Bobble, whatever you want to call it. And you could choose from a variety of levels if you want. You have power-ups that show up like bombs and stuff. That's not much really to it. It's Puzzle Bobble, Bust a Move, whatever you want to call it, it that, that sort of game, Puzzle Blaster thing, that kind of thing, and, and, and I guess, well, you know. I, I, I think I dragged this out long enough. Let's move on to the next game, shall we? Next up we have Colorful Box, and yes, 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 at long last, took us well over 130 games and several educational games that we skipped over. Well, we finally found our Tetris knockoff. It's not a complete Tetris knockoff because it's not just four pieces, it's some pieces are three piece, two piece, one piece, 
but it's the same deal. You form lines to make them disappear, make the blocks disappear, that sort of thing. There's not much to it. it it's and, and sometimes blocks will from, fall from the sky. Sometimes blocks will form underneath to raise the height a bit. But other than that, it, it's the same kind of Tetris style gameplay that we're all familiar with, and there's not much else to it. So I don't think I'm missing anything by skipping out. So. Moving on to the next game. It, it took us a while at least to get there, so that's something. Our next game is Fish Killer. Funny how a game called Killer is in, <laughs> in the relaxing stage, but nonetheless. Anyways, you eat the little fishy, and as your meter builds up and starts unlocking levels, you could, big, you could eat bigger fish and... Eh, it's not much to it. It's, I, I guess it's kind of relaxing. The chomping sound effects gets uh, annoying after a while. But you could eat bigger fish and you could, you know, I don't know, something, I don't know, whatever, something. Whatever works for you, I suppose, right? Um, and try not to get e eaten by the bigger fish, because then they'll eat you when... But if you eat enough, you can, I don't know. Uh, it's relaxing, I guess. I'm falling asleep here. Uh, might want to change that, though. Let's change it to something else before I, I lose consciousness entirely. Next up on the list is Pinball, and it's a pinball game, for better or worse. Uh, I will be perfectly frank here. If you're going into this expecting realistic pinball physics, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. This is the furthest thing from realistic pinball physics. Uh... Pinball on the Nintendo Entertainment System has more realistic pinball physics than this game does, and I'll just leave it at that. It's a happy, upbeat, relaxing atmosphere, if nothing else, but that's about all it's got going for it, so... Um, yeah, 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 that's pinball on the Go Gamer portable thing. And, um... Next... Next up, we have Polar Bear, and it's whack-a-mole, essentially. But with polar bears instead of moles, and ac actually those... I don't know, I could be wrong, but those don't look like polar bears to me. Um, they look like regular bears, but I uh, I don't know. Uh, anyways, it's, it's whack-a-mole, there's not much to it. Not much to say here. Next. Last game on the Relax list is Color Stone Loops, and this is basically another Zuma clone. Uh, same as before, except different layout, but other than that, it's the same thing. You shoot the marbles at other light-colored marbles, and they explode and stuff, and, um, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Not much else to say there, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's Color Stone Loops, Zuma, whatever you want to call it. That game. Next. And so, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We're just left with the action category, and there's quite a few games to go through here, so let's start off with the first game, Hair Fighter. Which is not a fighting game, or a shooter, or anything of the sort. It's a simple, single-screen platformer, where you control a little bunny shooting mines at other enemies, and uh, that's pretty much it. You shoot a number of enemies, and then once you've killed a certain number of enemies, you move on to the next level, and there's different levels, there's, just, there's different layouts. Uh, a couple of the enemies look to have been ripped from uh, Kirby, and uh, that's the thing. So I just cleared a level because I killed about 10 enemies. And uh, it's pretty much the same thing. There's like different varieties at, at some point, but not all that different. Uh, and uh, it's a simple, very simple, single screen platform game. You shoot things. Uh, the one one odd quirk that you just saw there is that enemies appear at random with no warning. So, you might want to watch your step. But other than that, it's functional. It's not it's not the worst thing I've ever played. It's actually quite competent for better or worse. So, anyways, moving right along. Next game on the list is Robot War. You control a tank and you blow up other tanks that show up on screen from the tube doors, you know, on the top and bottom. After a while, once you killed a certain number of tanks, a boss mech will show up for you to blow up, and you beat that boss, you move on to another level, 
which is slightly different but otherwise the overall same gameplay. Uh, it's functional if nothing else, but after a while it does, you know, wear out its welcome. It's not the most exciting thing ever, and then sometimes you have tanks that just sort of wait there. But, uh, anyways. And it's not much to it though. It's, it's, it works. It's not the greatest thing you ever played, but it's, it's, it's fine, I guess, I suppose. Not much else I could say here, so... Anyways, let's move on. This one's fine. It provides the action, at least. That's all I could say. Next up, we have West Cowboy. Uh, not much to this one. You know, the countdown goes down, you draw. You could sidestep, but you could shoot... You, whoever shoots the other guy first wins. That's all there is to it. Also, this game uses the same background music as the Robot War, and it really doesn't fit. Eh, not much to the game, not the most exciting thing, and uh, quite honestly, I got bored with this after a while. Though this is my favorite part of the game, to be honest with you. That's fantastic. Next! Next game on the list is Balloon Boy. And if you enjoyed Balloon Trip of Balloon Fight on the NES or Balloon Kid on the Game Boy, then this is essentially a less than stellar version of those games. On the bright side, there's no auto-scrolling, so it's a little easier, but on the other hand, it is a little easier. The first time playing this, I didn't realize, but the goal of the, this game is to collect all the coins in the level. If you miss a coin, you could always go back and get the coins, but there's no time limit, so you don't have to worry. But, uh, uh, yeah. It's not a bad game, all things considered. It has a couple of quirks from Balloon Fight and Balloon Trip, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Balloon Kid. One of those games, um, actually I'd much rather be playing those games, but this one ain't too shabby either. I can't really complain. It's a fairly simplistic game. The sound effects for collecting the coins are really annoying, but uh, that, that's, uh, that's uh, a common ailment with... Oh, there goes, there goes the monkey. Poor monkey. Poor monkey. He had, he had so much to give. No, he doesn't. Anyways, next. Next game on the list is Crazy Fighter, and look at this, kids, it's a vertical shmup! <laughs> that didn't take long. You control a little plane, you blow up other little planes and tanks and things of that nature. You have a button to shoot your guns, a button to lay your bombs if you have any in stock. Of course, you could collect power-ups to increase your firepower or change weapons. And unlike other shmups, you could take multiple hits before dying, which is helpful because the game has its fair share of challenge due to enemy placement and also because the controls are kind of wonky. Uh, I don't want to say wonky, but I think it's more due to the D-pad being a stiff son of a bitch. But, uh, you know, control's not the greatest thing and you need a good set of controls. Also, your ship is slow as nails. And much like the City Fighter game that we played an eternity ago, uh, the levels drag on for way too long and you could be playing this for like 5 to 10 minutes before you face a boss. And uh, that's kind of unfortunate. I'm having an, I'm actually enjoying myself, all things considered, despite my crummy performance. But all things considered, I kind of wish I was playing this on some other format, preferably with a much more functional D-pad. But I digress. Next, next up, we take Jumping Boy. Basically, you control the monkey from the Balloon Boy game, and you know, much like the other game, you can have to collect all the coins and gems, and while avoiding the hazards. Uh, the platforming controls are kind of wonky a bit, which is to be expected. Um, try not to touch anything because that will kill you instantly. But uh, you have power-ups that will increase your height. You have power-ups that might give you invincibility. Uh, but uh, there are no power-ups to make this game any fun, because I'm kind of bored with this. You do have multiple levels, there's multiple hazards and as you go on and that sort of thing. But, um, um, uh, here's another level just to say that I went farther. But, uh, not the most exciting thing I've played ever. And, and it's like level placement's kind of, you know, oh yeah, yeah power ups show up after a while. Or they wear off, and, 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 uh, I've got nothing. Anyways, next. Next up, we have Rescue Pets. And basically, you control a little kid with a towel over his head, and you have to bounce the rabbits from one side of the screen to the other. Basically, it's much like that old Game & Watch game, Fire, where you have to catch critters and, you know, 
keep them from hitting the ground and that sort of thing. It's a fairly basic, fairly straightforward concept. It works well enough, there's not much to it. And, uh, you know, much like a number of these games, once you get a certain number of points, you move on to the next level. And it doesn't really change between levels, but, uh, you know, some enemies, some, some, some animals, some enemies. The animals are your enemies, they hate you. That's why they're, you know, sometimes you have little power-ups that show up, but, uh, yeah, it's a fairly straightforward game, not much to it. Uh, it works. Next. Okay, before we go on to the next game, I want to pull up a specific clip of a review that I did of Frogger for the Super Nintendo several years ago. This one point in particular I want to highlight. Hold on. This horrible abomination that you see on screen before you is not a bootleg ripoff of a classic game as featured on some obscure plug-and-play machine with substandard games and build quality, but something that was actually licensed by Nintendo for play on your Super Nintendo Entertainment System. As alluded, this looks less like a visually updated version of Frogger and more like a shitty looking knockoff that you play on one of those cheapo Wii knockoffs that were all the rage six to eight years ago. Gone are the familiar musical jingles and beeps and bleeps of the original arcade game, and its place are obnoxious cartoony sound effects to go along with the depressing cartoon frog and ugly visuals. Hence, we have Crossing. It is Frogger, pretty much in all but name. Um, you guide your frog across the street and across the little stream, and every time you get a frog across the stream, you fill a star, and once you have all five stars filled, you move on to the next map, which is a different layout, so there's a bit of variety here. Uh, but it's not a bad knockoff of Frogger, you know, if I could give credit where it's due. But it kind of makes you wish you were playing Frogger, which is a little faster. Yeah, I don't know if that's the right word, but nonetheless... Uh, that's crossing. Next. Next up, we have Climbing Expert, and basically, you are a person who has to climb up vines to the top of the building. All the while avoiding getting your head hit with pots falling from the sky, as well as the various nests and things of that nature. Uh, you might want to collect the coins for some extra points and that sort of thing. It's fairly simplistic, fairly straightforward, and fairly boring. Not much else to say here. Moving right along. Next up we have Jack Adventure, and this is another side-scrolling platformer where you move from left to right, avoiding the hazards like the whale squirts and enemies and things of that nature. Much like a lot of the platformers on this thing, your jumps are kind of floaty and awkward, and you have no attack in this game, so you just have to avoid everything and try not to fall in the water or do anything stupid like that. Eh. <sighs> Lame. Next. Next up we have Seize Jewelry. And this is essentially a vertical scrolling Donkey Kong clone. You know, see it's Donkey Kong, you have the ladders and you have the boulders falling down the slopes. You know, you pick up this little shield that acts as your hammer and that sort of thing. It's a fairly basic, straightforward clone of Donkey Kong. Not the greatest thing ever. Uh, it it kind of makes me wish I was playing the Atari 2600 version of Donkey Kong which is not the best version of the game for that matter. And if you beat this level, you move on to the next level, which is, wait for it, the same level all over again with slightly different layout and item placements. Um, uh, um, 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 yeah, never mind. Next. Next up we have Greedy Girl, which is a variation of the classic game Snake, where you control a little girl and you have to collect these eggs that appear on screen all the while avoiding enemies and other hazards like this wall that I'm going to run into and die at. That's kind of unfortunate. So you basically collect eggs, and as you collect eggs, a snake of eggs will appear behind you, and you have to avoid that. And once your score reaches the goal score, you move on to the next level, which is essentially more of the same. I've played many versions of Snake, and I'd much rather be playing any of those than this. Let's just put it that way. Next. Next up we have Spring Mice, where you control a mouse on a spring and you basically have to hop on these platforms to get to the top. Uh, I've seen many games like this and uh, sometimes they don't have the best collision detection, but this one has somewhat decent collision detection. It works well enough. It's a fairly simple, fairly straightforward game. There's not much I could say about this one. But I guess at the very least it does work well. It's fun for a lark, I suppose. And, uh... 
Really, not much else. I mean, no, it works well enough as far as. Well, well, wait. Oh, well, 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 never mind. I, I guess we'll move on to the next game, which is. Rope skipping! <laughs> Basically, you skip rope! <laughs> uh, slower. Sometimes it'll go faster, and why am I wasting- why, why the fuck am I wasting time with this? <laughs> Next. I tell you what, folks, those last couple of games had more than their fair share of action, but if the intensity of rope skipping and egg collecting is too much for you, then you may want to stay away from our next game, which is... Pool Party! Or you basically have to get kids to land in their toboggans or cups or whatever, flat, uh, whatever floats by, and sometimes... Sometimes the water will go by quickly, sometimes it won't, and uh, this is kind of lame. Uh, it says something, one of my favorite part of the game is when the kids jump into the pool, they miss, and they look sad because they can't climb back onto the uh, floatable or whatever the case may be, and uh, why am I playing this next? Next up we have Elvish Boy, which is another side-scrolling platformer game. And this one is actually reminiscent of another game that we played earlier on called Forest Adventure. You basically can control a little boy who shoots marbles at enemies to stun them for a short period. And you could use them as temporary platforms, which is actually a nice touch. Uh, other than that though, uh, there's not much to this game and... Uh, not the most exciting game to play, I'll say that much, so... Eh, next. Space Sword, and look at this opening introduction. It's absolutely riveting. Well, not really, but it's riveting by the standards of this handheld portable Go Gamer thing. Anyways, you control a guy with a sword to kill things, a shield to block things. You have a radar to tr keep track of all the enemy bogeys, and on occasion you could pick up a power-up to upgrade your sword to a blaster. And I have no idea how you're supposed to be playing this thing. Uh, I don't know if you're supposed to destroy a certain amount of enemies to move on to the next level. I don't know if you're supposed to find a boss of some kind. Uh, yeah, I got death. Thing. So let's move on to a game that's a little more straightforward. That game is Save the Fallen, which is a fairly straightforward game. You uh, rescue your comrades scattered throughout the level, and you bring them back to camp. Uh, the level ends when you find all your comrades and bring them back to camp. Try not to walk over to mines. That's very important. Uh, it's not bad. It's a fairly straightforward, uh, sort of a Metal Slug light kind of game. Nowhere near as intense, but, uh, you know what? I've played worse games on this thing, and this one ain't too shabby. Of course, you'll probably want to play anything else but this, but... Eh, it's okay. Next game is Hell Marksman, and this is a game where you control a little red-headed kid and you use your bow and arrow to kill all the enemies on screen to move on to the next level. There's even a mechanic where you could use, you could shoot an arrow at a block and you could use that as a stepping uh, a step ladder of sorts so you could reach a higher platform. Uh, not that great control-wise. Primarily due to the fact that unlike most platformer games, which at least uses both buttons on the uh, Go Gamer, to jump you press up rather than A or B or anything of that sort. So it's a bit uh, a bit of an awkward proposition, and also your character moves way too slowly. Um, not a fun game in the slightest. Next game on the list is Anti Gravity Robot or anti-gravity robo, and uh, I fall and I die and stuff like that. Anyways, you control a robot who can control his gravity by pressing the A button. You could hop from the floor to the ceiling and that sort of thing. It's sort of reminiscent of that one game called Metal Storm, except you don't have a gun and you press up the jump. Um, it's one of those things, I, I guess this was made when the Go Gamer only had one button to play with. Uh, because uh, there's no reason for you to have to press up to jump when you have two perfectly functional jump buttons and things of that nature. And Anyways, moving right along, we have... 
Now we've got Airborne Alien, where you control a little alien whose goal is to land on the floor and the bottom, all the while avoiding hazards like blocks and things of that nature. Uh, fairly simple, fairly straightforward game. There's not much to it. And uh, I don't know, that's all I got to say about that. So, uh. <sighs> I'm sorry, that's sort of a relaxing game, you know, watching this and even playing this myself. Why is this under the action category again? I, uh, I, I, I can't quite pinpoint why this would be an action game, but anyway. Gliding Apple Girl. Basically, you use the D-pad left or right to accelerate or decelerate while using a button to hop onto a button that will propel you into the air and keep you in the air a little longer. Basically the idea is to maintain enough of a speed to cover as much distance as possible to clear uh, the amount of distance needed to win the game or whatever the case may be. Um, if you've got nothing better to do, it's a fairly simple straightforward game that might be... Uh, actually no, I'm, I'm trying to find something nice to say. Uh, but this is just really putting me to sleep, so we're gonna move on and be done with it. Next! Okay, before we move on to our next game, has any of you played Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse on the NES? You remember this level? Where you have to take the time to meticulously climb the blocks to reach a staircase that's out of reach? It's a fairly tedious process, it takes a good long while. And unless you have Alucard on hand, or have plenty of hearts to spare, so you can turn into a bat and make your way up there rather easily while avoiding all the blocks that might knock you to your doom or whatever the case may be, suffice it to say this is a very annoying level. And I bring this level up because our next game on the list, Jumping Ball, reminds me of that level from Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. Except the pattern here seems a lot more random, and um, yeah, it's pretty much all I have. The pattern's a lot is a lot more random compared to what you get from Dracula's Curse. At least Dracula's Curse, with that level, once you figured out the pattern, it was just a matter of outlasting the blocks enough that you could make your way to the top. This is pretty much the same deal, but it's nowhere near as fun, and I died and I don't care. Next. Next game on the list is Mad Ball, and you control a big red ball who has to guide, go from point A to point B while avoiding the hazards and the pits and stuff like that. Oh, and by the way, you press up to jump and, um... Yeah. Anyway, uh, it is what it is, and we'll just leave it at that. Next. Our next game is Glide Object, and you have a level select to try out the various sports, of which there are 15, and I have no clue what you're supposed to do in this game. Um, you crash into things, that damages you, and uh, yeah, I've got nothing. And we're going to crash in a short bit. Oh, well, I'm dead, that's unfortunate. Let's move on to the next game, which is Submarine. And Submarine's kind of interesting because you have two skill settings. You could play with the sailor where you just guide your submarine from beginning to end or you could play as the captain which gives you some offensive weapons to deal with and uh, uh, it's not the most offensive thing ever. Well that's unfortunate. Next Okay, so now we have Doo Doo Rush, and this is basically an endless runner sort of thing where you basically jump to avoid enemies and avoid falling in pits, and sometimes there's a pterodactyl that will carry you from point A to point B for a short time, and that's pretty much it. If you've played one endless runner type thing, you've played them all, so not much else to say here in that regard. Let's move on to the next game, which is... Now we've got Earthshaker, where you control a ninja, and you get use your sword to blow up, you know, crawling critters and things of that nature. And, um... Not very excited, I'm afraid. Next! Next game on the list is Fly Through Flowers. 
basically you control a UFO that has to fly through all the flowers and that's pretty much the whole game in a nutshell. You have weapons to fend off enemies if you ever find them but other than that um, yeah I've got nothing. And this isn't exactly the most exciting or enjoyable game to be played around here but uh, there you go. That's what we're dealing with in the final stretch of games here, so uh, moving right along. <sighs> okay, just a couple more games left to go and uh, we're done. So let's go through Full Moon Knight. You play as a werewolf who can punch things. See, you can give a nice uppercut to that skeleton. You pick up the vial to turn back into a uh, soldier from one of the other games, I believe. And then you pick up this key and you unlock the door. It's fairly straightforward. I like the background music. I like the background of the castle, the mountain in the background. This level kind of baffles me for some reason because well, you can't drop that. Because the idea is you have to get the vial first and before killing the skeleton is not so bad. It's this one jump that kind of baffles me and... Uh, uh, um, and what's how do I do this? You know, you either you over jump it, you under jump it, you always land on the spikes which protrude from the ground for some reason. And um, I don't know. I, I'm just gonna give up and we'll move on to the last game, which is Monkey Brothers. Basically, the idea here is that you control two Monkey Brothers. Uh, you could whip one to the top layer. Basically, you have to collect all the fruit as you're making your way to the top. Uh, try to avoid the uh, banana peels because that will hurt you and you do your compadre in the bottom. Basically you climb up. You could also climb down if you want to avoid the uh, things and uh, uh, not not exactly the best way to end the action category as it as it were but um, that's it. That's that's all the games here, and, and you have bouncing balls, and I don't care. It's, it's over. It's done. We've played all the games there is to be played, and uh, we're done. That last hour long journey has come to a close, and uh, We've played through mostly 220 plus games. Obviously, we skipped the. What's his face there? We skipped the. Um, the educational games. Sorry, it's early in the morning and uh, that sort of thing. And we skipped the educational games because they all played the same and that would have added another hour. Would you want to sit through another hour of this shit? Probably not. But then again. Um, <laughs> This video is long enough as it is, so uh, yeah, so the Go Gamer Portable. This took me several months to get through to get all the footage and doing all the dubbing and all that jazz. And in that time, uh, Re -res, the ReRes channel posted a video called The Worst Plug and Play Ever. A couple of videos called The Worst Plug and Play Ever. And apparently, that's going to be a series on his channel. So if you want to know more about these, knockoff portable handheld or plug-and-play devices with horrible compilations of games and horrible stuff go to ReRes cuz this shit ain't for me it was fun for our lark but under no circumstances am I at all interested in buying more of these things so um, yeah yeah so uh, just gonna stuff that in there and Look at some other stuff instead. So here we are, July 2017, a nice Saturday evening in the backyard, nice breeze in the background. You could probably hardly hear my voice in the background because of the windage, but nonetheless. Uh, I've turned the volume down a bit. I'm going to play it. This is the first time I'm picking this up in like ages. You can hear people in the background. And, 
Yeah, so if you've endured the past two and a half hours, or actually sat through the past two and a half hours, then I thank you for your patience and indulgence and the incredible amount of time that it took you to sit through the whole thing, because uh, uh, I don't know if I'd have the endurance, but nonetheless, I thank you for it. Uh, it was a long time in the making to get that put together, and... Uh, well, not, li not really much else I could add to it, but uh, in any event, just wanted to say, uh, just wanted to say thanks for uh, watching this whole thing. Thanks for enduring this. I know it's a bit long in the tooth, you know, especially considering, but uh, can't say I didn't skim through. Well, I did skim through stuff. The educational stuff, for example, was all the same. No, wasn't a whole lot to see there, but nonetheless. Anyways, uh, anyways, I'm going to close this off because I don't want this to drag too long. And also it's getting a bit cold here. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care and good night. Later. Okay, I think we can shut this off. I'm going to bed. Um, i going to go inside actually. Shit. And the coffee's cold. Brilliant. All right. Okay. Okay. I think we're done. Yeah. So what else we got?